cheese in there.
Good evening, everybody. I'll call this meeting to order. <clears throat> and the first item is approval of action minutes from last meeting, February 8th, 2018. So if you take a look. And the, um, and the new commissioners would abstain from this vote. Thing. I move that we approve the minutes. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Next item is public comment, which is any members of the public who want to speak on a item that's not on the agenda. Okay, so moving right along to announcement and updates. Uh, I wanted to express our thanks to Commissioner Sue Millers, who had served on the commission and um, decided to uh, retire, I guess we would call that, and also welcome our two new commissioners, Commissioner Martin and Sardinias, uh, to the Parks and Commission. Thank you guys very much. I added in your packet, just an FYI, the, the letter we received from Nancy Skinner's office, which I just thought was really nice. It was following the award that the um, Friends of Albany Park Program received from the California Parks and Rec um, Society luncheon. And so there was a nice letter to get. And so it's always nice to send along kudos. Um, and though I wanted to give you an update for the Memorial Park bathroom project that is okay. still out there. Uh, the plants have been going through a long process, plan still check. Still planning. We are done with that part. I think plan check is almost done, but it is on the agenda for the council meeting on the 16th to uh, request an approval to go out to bid. Mm -hmm. So that should be coming. And then also the work you guys did on consolidating the Measure WW money, um, that I worked on that application and through East Bay Regional Park District and that has been approved. So that move has been made and I think it was a good move. I think our, our bathrooms may need the extra money. So, uh, so those are two things to be looking forward to. It'd be nice to get new bathrooms in Memorial Park. Thanks, Shelley. Congratulations for the honor from Nancy Skinner. Yeah, yeah that's great. But this is a com one of the commission things that we ask you as to participate in, uh, participate in and it's been a long program. So kudos to you guys too. Great. Okay, so the next um, item is public hearing and presentations. Item 5-1 is the Eagle Scout project. Um, Jack Javier, is that right? Javier Troop 100 on Albany Hill, presented by Margot Cunningham, Albany Hill Maintenance Lead. And I want to apologize, I was supposed to print um, Margot's memo, uh, so I'm just going to put it really big behind her. Uh, as you guys know, Margo works for the City of Albany and she is the person who coordinates the maintenance projects on Albany Hill following the um, Albany Hill Creekside Master Plan. Thank you, Shelley. So um, I'll just give a little background here, but this is Jack Javier who uh, will be working on an Eagle Scout project on Albany Hill. Um, so for the past year and a half, I've been working with a contractor on uh, various vegetation projects on the hill. We've been taking out all kinds of invasive species. Uh, we've been pruning and thinning some native shrubs and trees. Uh, we've gotten quite a bit of work done, huge patches of uh, Himalaya blackberries removed. We've taken out acacias, cotoneasters, uh, all kinds of invasive plants. And we've opened up these areas now where uh, native plants can now uh, spread and, and take over from where the, the invasive, invasive species were. Um, and really, the, there were two main goals in, this, in these projects. One is that we're reducing fire hazards on the hill. And the other is that we are uh, preserving habitat, preserving and promoting native plants and wildlife habitat. So, um, the idea with uh, Jack's project is that we want to plant some Albany Hill natives. These are plants where the seed has been collected from native plants on the hill uh, and then propagated and grown. And then we're gonna plant them back in these areas where these patches where invasive plants have been removed. And specifically, it's uh, two areas, um, one in a meadow and one uh, kind of on the edge of a, an oak woodland. Um, so I'll let Jack talk a little bit more about that. Hi guys, um, I'm Jack and I'm doing my Eagle project on Albany Hill. So basically I'm doing two meadows on the east side and on the northeastern side. 
and we measured it. It's around 3,500 square feet. We were planning on basically what our plan. My plan is basically to remove invasive non-native species that could like damage the environment. We want to reintroduce native species to it helps the environment by and it makes and, and helps the public become it makes them enjoy it more becomes more enjoyable makes the environment healthier safer and then this reduces fire hazards like margo said and i'm using my troop as the volunteers basically i'm choosing maybe around 15 to 20 scouts to help in any of margo's people they can join as well and um base yeah we're planning on doing it on the saturday of the 28th this month on the whole day and we're doing a check maybe the next weekend after that to see how the progress is and if any other work needs to be done or anything. Right. Thank you. So does anybody have any questions? I just want to say I think it sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it sounds great. I was wondering um, where the who, who uh, what's the process for collecting the seeds from the hill and doing all that, who does that? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I do that, I start collecting probably in about a month or so when seeds start ripening. Uh, I go out just about every couple weeks through the fall because different plants seed at different times and um, go and check the seeds to make sure they're ripe. Sometimes they're, you go out and they're still green, so you have to come back and you just collect no more than 10% of the seeds from a plant or from a population because you don't want to uh, over collect. You want the, some of the seeds to uh, drop and then propagate new plants there. And also it takes away, if you take too many seeds, you're taking away the food from birds and other animals. So, and so I collect the seed and then I take it up to a native plant nursery and have them propagate the seeds and then buy the plants back at a discount. So I had a, a question about water. So it seems like we may or may not be getting rain after these are planted. Will that be an issue going into a drier period? It, it could be. It's getting a little bit late. I prefer to plant earlier, but uh, we did get some late rains even today actually. And so we will have to be watering these plants as we put them in. So I was going to ask Javier, are you plant going to do some of the watering, or are you mostly doing the initial planting? Or um, we're going to do some of the we're doing the planting, of course, initial, and we'll probably yeah we'll water also to make sure they get on their feet and sure get on their feet and start. Excellent, growing. thank you. Yeah, and what I do after these plantings, I come back a week or two later, especially if it's dry, and check on them and give them some more water. Great. Any other questions? Thank awesome. you very much. So much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate Congratulations. That. A lot of work. <laughs> so the next item is 5-2 uh, street tree removal application for one golden rain at 723 Carmel Avenue. And uh, Shelly, I don't know if I need to recuse myself. Okay. No, it's new. The across the street neighbor. Does that mean I, do, should I step out or? That's fine. <laughs> okay, so uh, 723 Carmel Avenue um, this is regarding removal of a tree that was reported to me by the property owner um, actually three times over the past two years. And um, every time she told me that the tree's dead. So I went out and looked at it, still had some life. Went out back and looked at it the second time, still had some life the third time. It was winter, but I noticed that a, a lot of the, the tips were flagging, meaning they were, they were dead, they were curling over, they were, they were drying up, that's a sign that they're dead. Um, also, she reported some branches that fell on cars. So, um, so what I did was, I presumed it was a dead tree, and I hired a, contracted a tree crew to go out and remove the tree. 
and a neighbor called in um, complaining that there was no posting, there was no notice, the tree crew had no removal permit, they didn't know who the tree crew was or who they were working for. So I had them stop. Uh, this is what was left of the tree. They basically took out the left and right portion of the tree um, before the neighbor stopped them. So um, part of the reason and it, mm. that I wanted to get a crew out there is the trunk is about at least 75, 80% dead. The, the arrow is pointing to a lack of bark, the lighter area. Is a lack of bark on the very right side. There's a little bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of bark, and a little bit of the cambium layer still left there, the living part of the tree. So, um, here's a few from the other side. You can see wrapping, wrapping around to where there's still some bark left on the tree. So, pretty precarious. Big chunks of bark sitting on the floor there, on the ground. Um, didn't look too good. So this is the tree before. This is a Google street mm. image. So that's what it looked like in, I think, 2005. I can't. Oh, that's 2011, actually, that picture. I guess that was the, the latest uh, Google picture. That's amazing. But, <laughs> so it's a golden rain tree. Apparently, the, the property owner told me that she had been talking with Tony, who had some concerns about it. And he kept saying he'd keep an eye on it. And um, so when he left, obviously it was dropped and she, she, she was still concerned about it. Um, so what I want to do is re re continue the removal. There is some growth, there's some leafing out on the tree. I think the parts that were removed were the, the completely dead parts and there's a little bit of uh, leaf, leaf growth at the, t the top of the tree right now. Um, but the tree's not going to revive. It's not coming back. Um, there's, there's really no, no future for the tree. So um, that's, that's what's left. And that's, I'd like to get, have that removed. Let's see. Um, part of the issue here is my interpretation of what a imminent hazard is. An imminent I, I don't know. My, my definition was this is a, a basically a dead tree and I needed to have it removed. So I did it as an emergency tree removal. Um, so there's question, you know, does imminent mean tomorrow, today, tomorrow it's going to come down or does it mean it's going to come down but we don't know exactly when. So um, my feeling was it was a dead tree, we remove it, we replant, we get started right away as soon as possible with a new tree. Um, another issue is the idea that we, we don't actually have a removal permit that we issue to property owners. Hmm. So I've been, or I drew up a couple of documents, I didn't include them here, I didn't bring anything with me, but just the basic, you know, City of Albany tree removal permit issued to the property owner, the reason why the tree is being removed. Is it going to be replanted? If it is, what species? If not, why it wouldn't be replanted? So um, just something so a tree company or the property owner can have on hand, or both can have on hand in case there are questions that come up again. In this case, if they had an actual permit, I think the neighbor who was concerned would have just said, OK, you know, go ahead and continue the work. <clears throat> um. if, if I can jump in. Uh, also, I think this was a good learning experience for, for John and I about this document that you guys are currently working on. And these are things that really should be in this discussion later about how we can um, improve this process. Even if it is an emergency tree removal, how can we notify the neighbors so they're informed? Um, I think that's where the confusion was caused. This, this tree and this didn't have a tag on it and a crew just showed up and so a neighbor, uh, which was great, alerted us and said, why is this happening? Um, so John's suggestion about having a physical permit that tree removal people have and noticing neighbors, even for emergency removals, might be good to add into our um, 
policy. And then there's also a gray area because in the non-emergency, it says any living tree must meet one of these criteria. And in uh, John's judgment, this tree was not alive. And so I think that's also for that discussion later tonight um, and our ongoing discussions about um, the tree policy of how we um, work through those. Oh, Julie's not here. Who's our vice? Yeah. I think that's me. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I believe the next thing we do is go if there's any public comment about this topic. Or if there's questions, yeah. Or if there are any questions. questions. We get our questions first is what happens. Does anybody have a question? I did have a question. So uh, in your professional judgment, there's no coming back for this tree. If we give it more room or there's no tender loving care that's going to, this is on its way out. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. And, and I, I could see potentially, you know, emergency being, um, I mean, is this the sort of thing you have in mind? Like a, if a strong storm comes through, this thing might blow over. Is that kind of it, where we're going? It was possible, yeah. yeah. As a standing dead tree, there's no, there's some argument to leave standing dead trees, but not on a street, you know, right. not in okay. a public space where there's some liability for the city, the property owner. Um, and like I was saying before, we're, we're in planting Old right now. If we had right. a tree out in the right. stump ground, we could have a. There might be a new tree there already. Oh, and and do you have any idea why this tree is dying? Because uh, it, 2011 looked great. Yeah, or, or or why it's missing so much bark. Well, it's losing the bark because it's uh, dying. It's yeah. dying. <laughs> oh. It's it's all the the living layer is directly beneath the bark, connects the, the heartwood with the, the bark of the tree. And that's all died back. There's there's a little kind of, there's a small section in, in the in that picture in the kind of rear right side that has some living cambium left, the, the living part of the tree. But um, when I was there, there, a lot of the bark was peeled. And when I put a sign on there, more <laughs> of it just started peeling right off. So. And there's no clear reason. I mean, sometimes you can tell, but this time you really just don't know. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that's fine. Hard to say. Yeah, yeah. I was just curious because this same type of tree, I noticed, and this is a later discussion item, but is on the approved tree list. Is there any concern about this particular type of tree, or we see these trees thriving in parking strips in other parts of Albany? I, I don't see too many of these in Albany. I, in fact, I'm not. I can't think of another one. But apparently. For many years, it did well. Um, I don't know if something suddenly changed. I mean, suddenly for a tree is five, ten years. Um, groundwater shifts or compaction or it's hard to say. In just a moment, we're just finishing up some questions first. I think that's it for me. At this at this time, we'll take some public comment about this issue. Hi, good evening. My name is Jeremiah. I'm a resident of Albany, uh, partaking in my own Civics Academy, which is just coming to. Good for you. Uh, thank you. Uh, coming to uh, more meetings instead of just a city council meeting. I'm trying to go to different committee meetings as well. So that's how I'm starting doing my own uh, Civic uh, Academy. So when I was watching this live on. Um, and on YouTube, and because I subscribe to the Albany Channel, and part of my own Civics Academy, and so uh, one issue with this tree is I just want to raise awareness: is a lot of the trees right now, um, right now are still in dormant stage, and they kind of look dead. But it's, it's just just remember that it's just winter time, and a lot of these trees are have went dormant, and they've lost their leaves during the fall season, and a lot of trees um, are like evergreens, do stay and have leaves all year round. But these trees uh, lost all their leaves, possibly, and um, they haven't had a chance to, in the springtime, uh, you know, grow their leaves yet. So this tree may just be in a winter dormant state. I, you know, I see some branches trimmed down below. But um, if you could do a full, you know, investigation on this tree, because if it's still living, you're just mentioning that, you know, if it could be a dead tree, then you don't have to go through all these procedures. Um, and so just, it might just be in dormant state, and also, Trees in Albany are a landmark. Each one, I know I grew up on Cornell Avenue, and the tree was cut down a few years ago on Cornell and Marin. And it was always, to go to my grandparents' house on Cornell, 
I always turn left at the big tree on Marin. <laughs> and uh, I'm kind of lost now on Marin sometimes, and it's just all these trees get cut down. And um, if we could plant a new tree and replace, if we ever do cut down a tree, if we could just uh, plant a new tree that's, uh, that would be acceptable or something and, uh, and replacement of it. Yeah, thank you for uh, allowing me with my public comment. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments about this topic? I was going to comment on that. I, I drove by the tree today, and it is actually leafing out on top. That picture must be from earlier. But it sounds like it's John's uh, assessment that it's uh, not long for this world. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and most of it's, it's dead. You can see, again, on the trunk, all the bark that's peeled off of it. So at this time, I think uh, we'll take a motion. I'll just point out that it looks like our um, recommended action is to um, to recommend it for uh, removal and replacement uh, as per John's report. So do we have a motion? Before I make a motion, I would just like to point out, just, just so you know, we do have to plant a tree. When we remove a tree, we do have to plant one. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to let, let you know that. We'll, we'll continue the process, and, 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 and you'll hear at the end um, what the status is. So I will move that we approve the uh, application for removal of this tree. Great. Thank you. Do we have a second? I second. Great. All those in favor of going forward with the removal and replacement of the tree? Aye. Okay. The motion passes. So. Uh, Julia can now come back inside. And if I may, there's, there's a 15-day period, and, and the decision can be appealed to city council. That's. Okay, I'm gonna pass the baton back over to you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so the next item is um, six one accepted street tree planting list. Subcommittee will present revisions and recommendations to the commission. <laughs> Somebody was who's taking the lead on that? Do you know? I think one of the subcommittee members, right? So, Todd, you were part of that. I was going to see if John had anything to say. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can. Um, <laughs> sure. There's staff report. Yeah, yeah. start with the staff report. Yeah. So, um, should I read the staff report? Or? I don't think I need to do that. Um, I, I noticed a lot of the the species that we have that are common or, or that are on the list that we plant, have planted in the past in the city aren't doing that well. So I wanted to look at it and um, see if we could get rid of some of these trees off of our list. Also, there's a lot of talk about our climate changing and um, our weather's been different. Our summers are less foggy, they're warmer, we're drier. Drought. We all, we all are aware of that. So I want to get some species that are more drought resistant, maybe from slightly different climates presently, that looking forward would be a, a long-term tree for the city. Um, so I did some research on that. But first, I, uh, some of the trees that I'd like to take off, liquid amber is a tree that I think we all agree is, doesn't work well as a street tree in most cases. Um, a lot of the flowering fruit trees, like the uh, flowering cherry, or hawthorn is another, um, crab apple, a lot of these trees are just looking really bad. Uh, a lot of it's due to the drought, I, I would imagine. Um, but a lot of these trees are small, short-lived trees, fragile trees. Um, I just wanted to get more, again, more long-term, more hardy hopefully hardy, uh, longer lasting trees on the list. So <clears throat> I did some research and I found a lot of species that would, would be beneficial or hopefully would be beneficial to have in the city. Part of, part of the problem with this, and we see this every, everywhere basically, um, these lists get revised, a new tree species gets introduced, and everyone's excited about this great new tree species, but we don't really know how well it's going to do for 20, 40 years. 
um, until 20 or 40 years from now. So, um, but a lot of these species I looked at, I tried to find information about how well they work with sidewalks. Um, they're mostly con considered drought resistant. A lot of them need some water. Almost every tree needs some water initially, but eventually they're considered drought resistant. I know that Albany has a lot of uh, different groundwater flows. So once a tree is established, roots are down finding that moisture. So, but again, most of these are considered drought resistant. Um, I know natives, people love natives. I love natives. I have a live oak and a redwood in my front yard, which is both the oak not so bad. The redwood was not a, a good decision. Um, <laughs> But for a street tree, definitely not. And a, a live oak tree, they're great trees. I think we should encourage this. There are places I'd like to plant some live oak trees, but um, for street trees, they're not that great. Um, one, one of the trees that we have that's pretty common is the redbud tree. And it's, it's a tree that's more, more of a shrub. It, it tends to naturally grow more in a shrub form. And I see a lot of, almost everywhere, they, they start growing out into the sidewalk and someone comes along and just snips it. And on the red buds where you cut it and you leave, you cut a stub like that, it just dies back. Mm. Eventually the whole tree starts dying. They're weak wooded, they split out often. Um, they're beautiful this time of year. Um, some of them, if they're well kept and they're well trained, they grow into a, a sort of a nice tree form, but uh, they're not, you know, they're a small tree, a tiny tree, more like a big shrub. Um, so that, not not my favorite tree. Um, Ray Hartman Ceanothus is still on the list. I have these marked. There's a couple um, California natives here. But my point is that the natives are more suited to the wildlands than, than an urban um, and so the, so. Sorry, just because it's hard to hard to like follow where where we are uh, one of the ones that you just named was that one of the ones on the list when you, that you said that you would ever actually recommend against is it on the, this list right now or yes it's, I think it's on the first page towards the red, red hole. okay yeah, it's in red red yeah tire. yeah the ray hartman uh, the one that has the headings on it oh no oh no oh Could we, uh, do you mind, John, if we take a step back and ask, how did, how did you come up with this list? Is this like a revision of the original tree list that we've ha we have had? I took the original tree list. I looked mm -hmm. at um, neighboring cities, El Cerrito, Richmond, Oakland, Berkeley, San Francisco. Um, and I did some more research. I, I got some research from ISA, from the International Society of Arboriculture where um, people are talking about climate change and what species would be more hardy. Um, there's some trees from that are more common in Texas or Southern California or San Luis Obispo area or things like that that we don't normally consider a, a Bay Area tree. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I looked them up. I looked for what uh, a har uh, um, what do you call it? hardiness zone. Mm -hmm. And we're hardiness zone 10A and sunset climate zone 17. So I look for right. trees that are in that range that supposedly will survive in, in that range. Um, so a, a similar question is um, from the original list, what percent trees roughly do you think you removed and, yeah. and added in? Well, the original list when I came on board, there were several original lists. So, but um, the, the latest one, I think, I don't know, I removed five or 10% 10, 10 at the most trees. And then you added some, is that right? I added a lot more, yeah. You added a lot, okay. Um, um, and yeah. I don't, I'm not aware, does this currently live in a public facing space on the website? So, and then are these hyperlinks show you a picture? Because I think as a homeowner, it'd be very helpful to see I'm making aesthetic choices usually, but then I also want to know that it's not going to muck up my sidewalk. Sure, sure. These, on this list, the new list, 
the common name is, there's links on all of these. So the common name, most of the time where, where it's on the list, it, it connects to the Friends of the Urban Forest in San Francisco, and they're, they're, they have descriptions for these trees. And the botanical name links to um, uh, something more academic. <laughs> What's that? Something more academic. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of it, but it, it, they both have pictures and good descriptions. And Friends of the F Urban Forest, they have little comments about how well it does in, a, in an urban setting. The other site uh, is uh, more general. So, because so, I couldn't help but notice the picture of the golden rain tree that we were looking at on Carmel um, also showed sidewalk um, problems around it sure. and I noticed that it's on here the other thing I wondered is if this list could be amended to include kind of a 1 to 10 m likelihood of problem with sidewalk with this tree just because some people that may be more risk averse would, would prefer to choose something that they feel like really has a, a limited root system sure well one thing I added is the minimum basin size based on what I found out about how aggressive is that what that they means? are Basically. Or, or what I know of the mature trunk size of the tree, you know. So you know, two by four, those are trees that just to cut out should do well. Okay. In a two by four okay. tree basin, yeah. And I just want to also comment. I have two flowering cherry trees that were put in at the recommendation of somebody, probably not through the official um, channels when we first bought our house, and one of them is, I think, dead as a doornail. So. I think, I don't know if it's drought or what, the other one seems to be okay and that one doesn't, so I don't know, but sure. I um, I mentioned that because I was surprised to hear you mention the flowering fruit trees as potentially not a good fit, um, but yeah. it sounds like maybe that's why we're well, seeing that. You have a 50% success rate so far, <laughs> right? So Which just isn't that good. So. And, and as a member of the subcommittee, I just wanna point out um, how much easier to use this is. All these okay. columns, the uh, the basin size and uh, native uh, uh, water, that's all new stuff. Yeah. And it's very accessible. And that's one of the things that we asked for was make it easier to, to parse. That's great. Because you would get this kind of this scrawled thing. And, and <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah. And this and is much, much easier. There's more, you know, in the notes section, there's, yeah. I, I don't have one, any comments there. Yeah. But there's room for one thing that would be helpful for, for me to see, or I think from others, is to think about the canopy size that mm -hmm. these trees might reach. And for climate sure. change, that's a big, um, a big incentive, not incentive, but that's a big sure. impact trees have in terms of reducing the urban island effect, heat island effect, is, and it's right. really related to canopy size. So a wispy, whatever, birch tree may not have the same uh, shade effect, so. Well, I, I try to encourage the, the largest canopy size tree. Great. Where we can, um, but it's more the, the right tree in the right place, you know. Sometimes a birch tree works. Sometimes Is there a way? To have a tree planted due to planting requirement. But how, how do you know? How, how can I, how can I know as oh, a how do you user? Know? Yeah. By clicking the links. <laughs> and looking at them. But, but yeah, well, I, I, I mean, I could add something like that. It's just I didn't want to have too much. No, I understand. I thinking. It's I understand. Just pull it up and click the link, and you can go right to pictures and more, more detailed description for each species. But um, for the ones that you removed from the old list, were any of those based on uh, what you've seen trees in the city already doing with sidewalks with root problems? Well, the liquid amber, yeah, is one. Um, I'm not sure if camphor was on the list anymore. Maybe, maybe not. I don't need to know all, all, all the ones that were like that, but just curious how much that was. But it's a rev it's it's just the old list redone with links, basically. I think so. Would be helpful if you if you. If this, I, what I'm hearing is that it would have been nice to maybe have a marked copy, like crossed out things that were gone from yeah. the old list, replaced, which we could yeah. come back and bring, so you can compare the two lists. Mm -hmm. um, so that could be a recommendation from you as well. Okay. The other, the other thing I have a concern about is the ginkgo, and and the reason why is actually because I learned this during my time serving on this commission is that it can be hard to differentiate the male from the female, sure. and so do we really want to? put that risk, I mean, we know the ginkgo trees cost 
big problems for folks down the line. So, when you buy a ginkgo from a, a nursery, it's supposed to be identif sex identified. You know, so they're supposed to be males. We're supposed to get males. There is a way to identify them. Maybe it might not be foolproof, but I think. I think ginkgo's a great tree. A lot because of why? What is the? Re I guess I'm just wondering, what's the justification? If there's that risk, like why? We don't have to include it, right? So why include it? Like what's the value of including it if there's a risk? Um, it's, it's a long-lived, hardy, large-sized tree. It's, it's an ancient tree. It's a monocot, monocot tree. It's, it's, it's a, basically a living fossil. You know, there's one, one tree that we have that you can find fossilized leaves of the tree. Um, just general interest, but, but it's, like I said, it's a large, health, uh, hardy, large size it's, tree. It's good in low water situations is what I remember. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah good. it's particularly good in It has water. beautiful fall, yellow, bright golden yellow color. And, um, Can you just summarize what the problem is with the females of those for those that are late to the party? <laughs> well, <laughs> they fruit, they have, uh, the stinky float uh, not fruit. Not necessarily slippery, stinky so is the on. word. <laughs> They're really smelly fruit, and, and they could be slippery, sure. Um, it smells like a bad cheese or something, or described a lot of different. Think of something that smells bad, and it's been described as that. Uh, some people like them. Some people actually eat the fruits or the nuts, but uh, mostly not. We've had we've had several applications um, right. to remove yeah. because the fruit um, falls and makes a big mess. And if you don't get it cleaned up right away, it gets tracked into your house or in your car, and it really smells, and it's a problem. Mm -hmm. The problem is um, it's difficult to accurately tell the well, difference, and it takes about eight years before they fruit. So you've got a real tree by the time you really know. Is that correct? Yeah. I understand. Yeah. I think. Not, not a, maybe not eight years. Yeah, maybe not eight years, and I, I've seen them smaller fruiting. So I think if we can just, if, if we dealt with them, a, a lot of these ones that came up, people said, oh, I talked to somebody years ago, or this has been fruiting for years, and no one in the city wouldn't let us remove it or whatever. I think maybe we make a provision where if it is a female, we can take it out and replace it. Well, that would be it, good, you know, yeah. If it's discovered. That was actually my question, is... is I've seen them like eight feet tall, a few inches yeah. diameter, maybe even less than three inches that are fruiting right. already. Okay. So there was one outside San Francisco Public Works. Oh, yeah. Yard <laughs> so you got first-hand experience. Well, I picked some fruits, and I brought them in my office on a Friday, and I came back on Monday. Oh, so you learned your lesson. <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to point out with a question about picking a tree. Is on the greenway at each of the intersections, the mounds, those are all street trees on from the list. So you can see what they actually look like when they're grown trees. So it's like shopping for a tree. Well, that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, It'd be nice if we put labels of which one they were. Yeah. I assumed we did. We don't. That's going to be part of that label the tree project. <laughs> <laughs> So that sounds like a good Eagle Scout, Eagle Scout project. Scout project. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Labeling. I had a fruit tree question uh, and greenway question. Uh, my wife was part of the tree task force maybe 10 years, 15 years ago, I forget, or 13 years ago. And and part of that, they were the BART uh, tracks were being all, or the area under it was all being ripped up for the retrofit. And so they were deciding what to plant back there. And one of the things that task force decided was to allow fruit trees. Uh, our, our family has enjoyed picking plums and things on the greenway with our kids. And uh, for um, food security, I thought that could be good. Are these uh, things, are there um, trees, are, are these the only trees that can be planted in Albany? Or um, on the greenway, could there be uh, fruit trees? Because I don't see any actual fruit trees here. Well, that's, that's a good question. Um, I think for a street tree, a sidewalk planting strip tree, fruit yeah, tree is not, want not it a there. good idea. If it's, it's going to drop in a public space. Yeah. Uh, people say, oh, I'll harvest the fruit, but, you know, it gets forgotten, new owners take over, whatever. On the Greenway, sure, and there are a bunch of trees. There's a rare fruit and nut grower association, people that have planted a, a lot of uh, unusual Fruit trees along they're, there. They're pretty small, so you haven't noticed them. Um, 
Okay, so those are not on the list, and that's and there's some other list, or so this is specifically for street trees. Outside of the street, I you can yeah. plant whatever you want, right? I mean, is there any limit to? Can you somebody's planting some of their backyard? Can the city well, say no? No, I mean, no yeah, private I mean, property planting. Yeah, land. exactly. So well, think, this is just think, for street trees. But I think Brian's. Uh, Commissioner Martin's talking about maybe the pub parks, right? Yeah. So like public spaces. Yeah, public spaces, parks. That at least back in the day, there there was a requirement to have uh, uh, a li there was a list of allowed trees even there. For the yeah. I'm not aware. Probably of before his time. List, but okay, um, and, and that's okay there, too. There I'm are just... fruit trees here and there, right outside the uh, community center. There's fruit trees planted. Um, there's the loquat trees that pop up all over the place, um, the fruiting loquat trees. Okay, so there's nothing saying that fruit trees can't be planted in public spaces, in the public parks and things like that. If it, I think, you know, oh, sorry. There's nothing at the moment, but if, if someone wanted to plant a fruit tree in front of their house, I would tell them, no, we, we're not. You know. Yeah, not talking about the house. Okay. What's that? I'm not talking about in front of the house, but on the greenway or in a park. Correct. We we did plant a bunch of fruit and nut trees in the greenway, which was fine. And usually any plant, tree plantings that would happen in a park, like we get a memorial tree request or other new trees going in our parks, it goes through uh, John and he makes recommendations on the trees to plant. Is that something our commission could discuss, though, like planting of trees in parks? Of course. Okay, great. So that's maybe another action item that we put on the agenda at some point. Okay. So, I have a few questions. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so you had talked about not liking the eastern redbud tree because it's shrubby. And um, I guess one of the things that I was seeing just from the tree picture and looking around Albany is that a lot of trees grow into power lines and that requires a lot of work. So I was curious kind of why something more shrubby wouldn't be more ideal and why things like, say, Gary elliptica or other native low kind of growing trees weren't included in this list. Well, um, again, right tree in the right place, you know. Um, Red buds may be on the power lines, but there, there are a lot of other species too that grow a little more robust, fuller, that can still be planted on the power lines. That I'd, I'd prefer to see that. Again, the canopy size of the, the tree, I think is important. We want as large a canopy. So I guess the question would be kind of what, is, is there a definition then that you guys have of what is a tree or what is acceptable for being included in this list of street trees? definition like what's the line between a shrub and a tree exactly mm, not not specifically no I mean, it's so, more like a preference some of these the, the ray hartman and the red butter more really more shrubs but they can be trained up into tree form there's, there's a few different species like that so um that's the only and then the other you brought up a number of times kind of the right tree for the right place. And my understanding is that um, the homeowners can kind of select from this list, but that you also have this experience of what trees grow well where. And so is there a potential to put that into this to have, say, zones in Albany or maybe even, you know, soil maps? Because I find that often, you know, some trees, I'll see ginkgo trees growing in what I consider really clay soils near Marin Avenue, and they don't grow at all, right, for a decade. Um, and so thinking about that um, we we don't we don't analyze soil types really but at, we have clay soil most everywhere the more 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 extent or less in, in different areas but um, the, I have you know I, I, I noted whether they're suitable for on the power lines or not and the, and the planting strip size is really the big Biggest factor, I think, you know, how big of a strip. And we have some really narrow streets, and we have some pretty nice, pretty uh, wide planting strips. So, I think I think we're going to get into kind of this whole process of applying for tree removal, right? Because I I guess one of the things that just brings up for me is that if some trees get planted and they have safe like failure to thrive where they don't grow, is that something where they could get removed or replaced with something that might be more appropriate where the city could actually provide more of a recommendation instead of the homeowner then just selecting from a list? Sure. I, I, in my mind, if, if a tree doesn't last a year, we're going to just take it out and, and replant with something if it, else. If it 
like <laughs> last but doesn't grow and, and kind of do well? Is that something that you would consider? Or if it's still alive, then keeping it. I think if mm -hmm. it's still alive, we keep it. Sometimes it takes a while for a tree to, to take root or to find the moisture or the soil, that, the nutrient it's looking for, and then all of a sudden it takes off. I, I prefer to keep it, if it unless it's looking sickly or... I have a tree, another native in front of my house that's a big leaf maple that was about a foot and a half tall for about eight years and then all of a sudden it started taking off. <laughs> Any other questions? So we could, if no other questions, we could take, there's a couple different ways we could go, right? We could- Public um, comment, I think is what we Oh, sorry, public comment. Any, anybody? Thank you. <laughs> you don't have a virus on it, do you, Mr. <laughs> it's brand new. It's got okay. one file on it. Okay. Well, I mean, if you, if you prefer, I'll, I'll put it up here. Um, good evening. My name is Ed Fields, and I live on Keynes Avenue. And admittedly, I have taken an interest in this tree list in particular because of the crepe myrtle that's in front of my house. Can uh, I interrupt you? Do, which, which thing on this do you want me to put up? Is it the? Uh, there's, only, <laughs> there's only one thing there, the uh, July 13th. I'm sorry, it doesn't have a good name. Uh, that's when I first showed it to some of you. Um, so because there's a great myrtle in front of my house. So I had a couple of random comments and then I just wanted to show you a few pictures of great myrtles, but not the one in front of my house. Um, so your role as commissioners is very important. It's uh, more than just rubber stamping um, the list and I appreciate the questions that you're asking and I obviously have a particular question and concern. Um, I also, before I get to that, I wanted to just briefly touch on the question that uh, Commissioner Martin brought up, which I had the same question on my sheet, which is I think that in terms of community resilience, it is important to talk about fruit and nut trees on, as street trees. And I think, you know, I, I don't want to have the discussion myself. You can talk about it or decide that, uh, you know, you accept John's recommendation, which, which I understand. I used to bicycle down the, the BART, you know, Looney Greenway, and there are all those plum trees there, right? I, I get it. But I think we have to weigh that, you know, having some oranges fall on the sidewalk or maybe not all get picked versus resilience as a community, you know, and having that food source. And so if we, if we could identify hardy fruit or nut trees that would, would do well as street trees, street trees except for the fruit, meaning that, you know, they didn't branch out at two feet, but we could train them, you know, I mean, most of us, like I have an apple, I have, many different trees in my little tiny lot, and I want them to branch out low, right? I, I have to buy dwarf trees or semi-dwarf trees, but if I could plant an apple tree that could have a trunk six or eight feet high and then branch out, I'd probably have a hard time getting in the apples. Maybe that'd be the problem. Uh, so maybe I've answered my own question, but, <laughs> but I think it's, it's, worth, it's worth thinking about. And we haven't considered nut trees. I don't know if the pistachio on there actually has edible pistachios or not. Um, Stash, not pistachio. Well, I don't know. See, I, okay. I don't know anything about trees. All right. So, but I want to talk about crepe myrtles. And I had, had presented this to you in July, and I've written a letter to Todd when he was part of the subcommittee. Um, there are dozens of crepe myrtles in my neighborhood. Okay, it's, it's the north, north end of Canes. Um, looks like most of them have been planted in the last 20 years but many of them, my, my tree I think is eight inches in diameter. Um, you'll see these trees, I just have a quick seven trees here. I've edited this thing. Um, they're eight to 10 inches in diameter, so they've been around 18, 20 years maybe. They're all tearing up the sidewalks, okay? Now, John is right, this tree is on all of the city's lists as a recommended street tree. But they all say that it has shallow roots that spread two to four times the size of the canopy. They all say that, but they all say it's a great street tree. And maybe in our clay soil, I don't know. I mean, I've got clay soil. You probably have clay soil. 
maybe they're just like sitting there, you know, taking whatever moisture comes and then they go under the sidewalk because you water, maybe you water your front of your house, but you don't water the crepe myrtle when it's eight, eight, or, eight or 10 or 15 years old. They're tearing up the sidewalk. So that's my point. I don't think they should be on the list. I think it's crazy. So Shelley, if you just quickly go through these, um, apparently, well, let's go back to the, which is the first one? Um, okay. So, I mean, you can see what they're doing. So I put the diameter, I went and measured them yesterday and this morning, I missed one or two, I didn't have time. So this is less than eight inches in diameter, tearing up the sidewalk. Go to the next one, please. Uh, same thing here. These are all in my neighborhood. I don't even walk around the other parts of Albany. Um, the next one, if you look at, there's two pictures of this tree. Um, so there's one. The reason I have this second picture, if you look carefully over there, that sidewalk was put in in 1913, I think. Okay, now I don't know if this tree tore it up or some earlier iteration of a tree tore it up. I have no idea. And then let's just go through the rest of them. Um, eight inches in diameter. Um, 10 inches in diameter. I, I just happened to be driving by one day and I, you know, cause I was getting on the freeway going down Jackson and I went, oh my goodness, I gotta take a picture of that one. And then the last two, um, well, there's only one, but there are actually two. Um, I didn't get to measure that one cause I live at the other end of Keynes. Um, so I don't understand why we have crepe myrtles on the list. I mean, you're, you're at, you're, you folks are asking the same question, you know, how much sidewalk damage do these cause? And John is saying, I think correctly he's saying, well, if they're planted in the right size basin, they shouldn't cause sidewalk damage because if they did cause sidewalk damage, I wouldn't put them on the list, right? I mean, common sense. Why is this on the list? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yep. Okay, can we bring it back to the commission for questions, discussion? Or response. Response. <laughs> John? Sure. Um, crepe myrtle, not, not necessarily my favorite tree, but it is a really hardy tree. It's a very common tree in the city. Um, in, on your block, in that area where there are narrow planting strips, it, it does lift up the sidewalk, but it's not the only species that does that. It's part of the, the struggle with having street trees. They, they break up sidewalks. Um, crepe myrtles are unique that the roots come to the top and they, uh, you see them in four, three by three basins and the entire basin is full of root matter. There's no soil, no weeds, grasses or anything. It's unique like that. Um, I think it's, it's hard. I think any tree can break up the sidewalk. It, it all depends on uh, the soil, how much water, how how much concrete is is there, or how much is it's opened up, so the tr the roots have room to grow and breathe and and absorb moisture. Um, I I think we it's a good tree to have on the list. Maybe maybe not in every situation, but not. I think again, the right tree in the right place. Great myrtle. Um, when sidewalks are repaired, they do pretty well with root pruning. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, <laughs> you, you have a point, but that point goes for almost every species as well. I get. Yeah, this is out of, actually is. Uh, oh, do you want him to go into the microphone? Yeah. If you want or him. Or what did we discuss? I think. I mean, unless there's another point, I think we should bring it to the discussion, back to the discussion. We heard your point, for sure, and great presentation. Um, any comments, questions? Yes, um, two things. If uh, this whole right tree for the right place, how then do you advise, like the homeowner who says, all right, I live on Keynes Avenue or in that area, how do I know not to plant a myrtle? Because you know, I'm somebody who has a stroller and has you know major issues navigating a lot of the streets in Albany, and so I'd want people to know not to plant trees that are gonna cause issues for other people in my situation. So what's the question? How? 
how do you ensure that a homeowner doesn't plant, say, a crepe myrtle in an area where they shouldn't be planting it? Because you have these recommendations, but like, would your if you're going in to plant a tree, would you just not do what the homeowner is selecting? Well, if if I think the tree's not a proper tree, I, I talk to them and I, I give them some suggestions for a different type of tree. I get requests for red maples under high voltage power lines, and I say, no, we're not going to do that because the knee's going to come and cut the middle out, out, out of it eventually. Um, and John, you, do you want to describe, you, you, homeowners just don't go out and plant the tree in their strips? I get you that okay, you, you plant them, but I, yeah. in case somebody is quite adamant, like is yeah. there a point where you can actually deny them like really petitioning to have a specific species of tree or do you find, I guess just That's to your point, question. do you find that most people would respond to your recommendation? I, most of them do respond to my recommendation, but I think if a homeowner is adamant about a specific tree, I don't think, as far as I know, we, we don't, we don't uh, deny that, you know, if they really want it. I advise, I don't uh, dictate what the well, I mean, I think, yeah, and I think the point is, is if we have an approved street tree list, we shouldn't be putting problematic trees on there, right, that, that require a debate and like, no, 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 I, I'm just saying like, this is a pretty long list. And I mean, one thing that I'm thinking, even just in terms of the length of the list is, you know, I'd probably click through the first 10 and be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> So many forget it or just pick the first five, you know, only look at the first five and I don't know if, you know, as a commission, we can think about if we want to encourage trees, certain more trees, and I know diversity is important, but there is a way we can encourage others, some species by having a little bit tighter of a list. I don't know if that's the way we want to go. I'm not saying that's the way we should, but having a long list means we don't, you know, we don't have much control over what people are picking. And I was wondering if you ever do like, this is the approved list for this year and next year we have kind of like prop rotation or something where yeah. if people are planting some each year, then you'd have some diversity, but it would keep it a little bit more limited. And then I guess my second question is um, to my earlier comment about is there any, for I, I see the basin size, which is helpful, but... Um, and I didn't understand what that meant exactly when I first was reading this, but I do think that <clears throat> if someone were advising me based on where I live, because I live over on Stanage, so in a similar um, kind of narrow planting strip area, um, I, I would really respond to something that very strongly says, we think there's the least risk of sidewalk problem with these five or 10 trees in your area. Um, and I just don't know how much microclimate, micro kind of guidance we can give in a city of this size, but that would just be one suggestion or thought because there are some people who really want to mitigate or manage their risk. And so because it is a financial um, exposure, if you have sidewalk problems, I just think that might be, even if it was three trees that are really recommended for this little area or for things of this size or whatever, because I definitely wanted trees, but I didn't necessarily want to redo my driveway. Yeah, we, we, we have an old list that lists every street in town and, and then species that should be planted, although I don't agree with how that was laid out, but that's a possibility, kind of a grid um, list of trees. Or even with the like West Washington or North, you know, those, I don't know if they go along with those little colored sub neighborhoods that are in the uh, community guide, but something like that where they're all kind of similar streets. I do think the point needs to be made that there's no guarantee. I mean, there's a, trees or organic beans are gonna do what they're gonna do, and any of these trees will, can lift a sidewalk. And there's, there's so you, you're not gonna get a guarantee. And, and, and the uh, city, I'm sure, would not wanna be guaranteeing Presenting anything that like there that. is a guarantee, I don't know. Well, just to the gentleman's point, is there any reason to c be more concerned about crepe myrtles than so other species? I, I did consider that, and, and I think I saw probably what Ed saw is you do research online, and I didn't have a whole lot of ammunition to take to the meeting, because online it says, this is a great tree. Mm -hmm. uh, the roots are shallow, but they're weak, and so they don't do a lot of damage, and so it, it wasn't, but I, I did think, request that maybe they only be specified for the larger cutouts. 
Um, I don't know how much long we want to spend, you know, arguing each or just each and every tree. But I wouldn't mind seeing crepe myrtle off the list, or if it stays, then in a larger cutout, just because we do have. Um, evidence that in our particular climate, whatever the character of the tree is, in our climate, it, it seems to be lifting sidewalks. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, that can be changed. Um, Where are the four by four basins? Are those on Solano or something? Sonoma, maybe, or? Well, four by four, what I'm really talking about is the four foot wide planting strip. So sometimes it's just a planting strip, sometimes it's an actual square basin, but that's kind of a minimum oh, I see, square size foot. that I think these trees would, would need to have. Well, two by four is probably in front of the typical thing in front of most people's homes. Two, two by four is like streets like Canes and the west side of town, the Adams and those streets, they have 27, it's more like 27 inches, but I just rounded everything to eat. So then what does four by four mean? Four by four is a 50 inch uh, planting strip. So. And um, so it still could be Santa two Fe. feet. It still could be two feet in one dimension, or where? Uh, my question was, where's a four by four uh, basin in Albany now? Um, a, a specifically four by four basin, or, or, or the I ones that you're indicating? Where so would anyone find a like? Mm -hmm. There are plant. There are trees that require a four by four basin, and I'm just curious. Um, how many well, of those basins a, do we minimum, have? It's a minimum minimum size. There should be a minimum four by four foot opening. There's a lot of four foot strips, so there's at least it's at least four foot by four foot wide or fifty inches wide. They are. No. But is it over like on the Portland opposite Memorial Park? Those streets are wider, and then they have a bigger basin, or is it? I guess I'm just wondering which parts of the city tend to have those larger areas. Well, I know Santa Fe does, uh, Marin. Um, it's it's not any specific neighborhood. It's it's specific streets that have the wider strips like that. I think a four by four basin. I I believe Solano and and San Pablo are four by four basins. They're mostly, or they were mostly uh, covered with tree grates. Also, but, um, those where, where it says four by four, that's typically your large. Uh, maple, oak tree, you know, your classic East Coast type of tree, maybe. <laughs> Any other? I thought you made a comment earlier that you love live oaks, but you probably wouldn't recommend them here. But it says Coast Live Oak still on this. Is that a different tree? No, that's, that's the tree. Okay. Um, I, it's Like I said, it's a great tree. It's a great habitat uh, value tree. Um, it's just messy. So if someone wants it, and they want to deal with it and take care of it, and they have the space for it, I think we can do that. There already are existing live oaks um, as street trees in the city. And that was a question that I had was, were you considering kind of like insects and birds when you were compiling this list when the well, subcommittee I, was doing I think it's just the idea of more diversity um, adds to that, you know. There have been scientific studies where they'll look at like an oak, say, and then they'll look at a non-native tree and they'll say, oh my goodness, there are, you know, more than 10 times more insects on the native tree than on the non-native tree. Birds tend to have a little bit less discretion, but those native birds that then are insectivorous will go to the oak. And so sure. um, I think it's not just diversity, but it really can be the species. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Is that's why so I wanted to leave Oak on. You know, so. I have a question to, to that point, because the note, in the notes, some of them are listed as California native, and then, you know, one's listed as not native to California. Just wondering if, how do we identify which ones are native? Just the ones that have them in the notes, or might there be some that we just don't know because they're not marked? I wrote not native on the California pepper because it's called California pepper. And it's <laughs> oh, I see. California yeah. native. I thought that was pretty funny. So, so the only native ones are the um, ones with the notes on the notes. Yeah, that's okay. a California native. Um, I think I got, I got them all on here. So, so, I, I, so if somebody comes to you and, and wants to put in a tree that's not on this list, it's just, it's just not allowed. Sure. Is that what we're saying? It's just... Uh, no. I, well, I don't think so, but... Right, right. I mean, this is supposed to be the approved, accepted list. 
we planted a couple of sweet tree, uh, sweet shade trees in front of the YMCA. We're waiting for the third one. They're hard to right. find. It wasn't on the list, but I know that the tree um, does well in San Francisco. Okay. So I approved it. I, I actually we discussed a lot of different species and. And I suggested that, and they, they decided, yeah, that sounds like a good Is that on the new list now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the idea I was going for was maybe having a shorter accepted tree list and a more liberal suggestion or request policy, uh, um, mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. emphasizing the, the natives or things like that on our, our actual list, but then saying, well, and if, if there's something else. What yeah, about I like a, that idea. Uh, more, uh, a uh, basic list and then a an extended list or something perhaps uh, yeah but I, I even with that I, I still think you're gonna get requests for things that aren't on the list anyway yeah. so well, that's so, that's fine then, yeah. then I'm learning something if yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely species yeah. that looks like I'll, I'll research it and see if it seems appropriate yeah, and I, yeah Todd I actually like I really like that idea because there's a way it was so my surprised what's that <laughs> actually but um I just like the idea of encouraging but then we have to go through that exercise of which was well it's a little more right? it, potentially more work yeah. okay yeah. so if you guys are interested I know this is a, a long list and it, in one way one reason it, uh, I wanted the diversity you know it's, it's sure absolutely but I also recognize that it's it is could be overwhelming yeah you know, someone doesn't isn't familiar with any trees at all clicking all these links and trying to decide and compare, so sure. Yeah, I like the idea of like a highly recommended or something, some subset that it, it takes roots into account and all these other considerations. Yeah, I could have a list that's, you know, if th these trees require discussion or something before right, yeah. being accepted. Or oh yeah, so that requires them to come to you and get a professional yeah. opinion, yeah. Okay, so I've heard from what I've, from our discussion, I've heard a few things. One um, was this idea of maybe having this list, well, there's a couple, of, one is having this list and knowing what we added and what we, you know, suggested and or deleted from compared to the most recent approved tree list. Another is to have the subcommittee, <coughs> excuse me, subcommittee go back and review and recommend a shorter list, a more basic list, and then also an optional longer list. And then the gentleman's um, recommendation to delete the crepe myrtle from the list, or all those species, I assume. W so, Would that one help to have it in a four by four basin, or if it, the roots are bad, or to, to change the basin size? I, I think um, I've seen the trees on, on canes and um, stanage and that, that general area, and my, my impression was, yeah, there's sidewalk lifting, but there's also other species lifting sidewalks. Yeah, yeah. But yes, there are si sidewalks lifting. But in other parts of the city where the, the planting area is a little bit wider, they, they seem to be doing pretty well there. So, so I think, I mean, okay. I could, if we change that to three by three or four by four, if we really feel that needs that kind of, I just feel in a four by four, I'd rather get a larger tree. Sure, sure, yeah. It's, it's a, yeah, kind of a that tall, makes narrow shrub in my mind. That makes yeah, sense. I mean that's another reason that it sh shouldn't be that highly valued. That perhaps sense. isn't as valuable for in my opinion. It's, it's one of the top requested trees in the on the planting. Because of this, it's beautiful leaves, right? It's a beautiful bar the uh, nice flowers. bark and beautiful the leaves. Flowers. The flowers. aesthetically oh. oriented people are choosing yeah. it based on flowers. I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah, yeah. And also they've heard of it, and which it, helps. Yes. So I think, but I would have never known that it was potentially a hazardous to sidewalk. Um, now I do. Yeah. Well, I mean, if people are requesting well, it. Other than that, it's not hazardous. It's pretty healthy. It doesn't yeah. drop limbs. It's a pretty hardy tree. So, um, so Todd, are you the only one here that was, that's on the subcommittee? That's right. So, okay. Yeah. Do you want to have any comment about what you'd like to do next? Do you want to take it well, back? I, I like, I like um, the idea, the suggestion of, of a shorter kind of greatest hits list um, or highly recommended. Um, and then I think the subcommittee might discuss how much effort we would want to put into kind of a secondary list. I mean, maybe maybe this would be the secondary, because you've already done a lot of work on this, mm -hmm. so. A lot of these trees are possibly hard to find. Okay. And maybe new, you know, being introduced to the area to sure. thinking about what to plant in the area. So those would be the first I can skim off and just put those as, you know, suggested, uh, possible trees that would need discussion 
In case there's someone who knows the tree, right. is aware of a canby oak, who knows what a canby oak is, my research shows that this is one, possibly one of the best trees for our area. But there's none planted. Yeah, anywhere. hard to find. Yeah. No one has heard of it. It's from a tree from Texas. So, you know, there might be some arborists out there who would say, "I want a canby oak. I know this is what I want. It's going to be a great tree." So. Um, but anyway, I could skim those less known, more kind of mm -hmm. esoteric trees um, off the list and keep more well-known ones and have pretty good diversity, I think. But so. the, the way this printed, it's on four pages, and if there was like maybe one of them was like the dream team of trees, and yeah. then yeah. you just keep the other three pages even, you could and just say these are the other. How about two pages? Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. It's, I think, um, one page is half of what we started with. The amount on one page here. So, is there a motion then? Would there be a motion? I, we, or I think we're sending it back. Okay. For, we're not yeah. approving. So, okay. Yeah. Great. But thank you, John. I know it's a lot of work and I really appreciate yeah. it. And I, I think this is leaps and bounds above where we started. So, uh, certainly appreciate yes, your thanks, efforts. Thanks, yes, thanks thank to you. you all. Thank you. Subcommittee, too. Okay, great. So, next item is the Discuss City Street Tree Removal Policy Subcommittee Report. That's me, <laughs> because actually, Commissioner Romero texted me, and apparently he's having car trouble, so he wasn't able to come tonight. Okay. But um, I was wondering if he still might be able to show up. But um, so the background is that um, Commissioner Romero and I were on the subcommittee to look at this street tree policy and. Um, I think it's interesting because I think when we sought it out, one of the concerns that I personally had was how the new sidewalk repair measure was going to conflict with the street trees that we were already seeing come, it was street tree removal requests were coming in because of the sidewalk conflicts. But in a way, we, Shelley actually, and um, Mark Hurley, the head of the DPW, really worked out a procedural way to avoid that using the street tree repair policy. So we can talk a little bit about that. But um, uh, but so what I wanted to just do today was talk about the status to date and some proposed changes, but I don't think those are the only proposed changes we want to make. So this may end up just being a discussion because there's so much to talk about here. And there's, and it's really profoundly changes the landscape of our streets. I mean, we see how, you know, cutting down a, a couple of big trees on a block can really affect the aesthetic and the even the property values of the block. Anyway, so status to date, um, we, you know, we actually started this process several months ago. So we met with John, the urban forester, also with Shelley and with Mark Hurley to discuss improvements to the street tree policy, the city tree policy and interactions with the sidewalk repair policy. We researched other cities' tree policies, which I think is actually a really valuable table that we can refer to when we're considering other ways to improve the policy. And then, um, and then we also submitted language to the city council, I think, right, Shelley, about the fact that we wanted to make sure the sidewalk repair policy followed its own sort of statement to look into alternative um, sidewalk repair measures in order to retain city street trees. Yes, we sent the uh, language to the Traffic and Safety Commission. Oh, Traffic and Safety Commission, thanks. Okay, so I'm going to change that. Um, but um, just to let the new commissioners know, the sidewalk in this at the uh, what the DPW Mark Hurley uh, verbally agreed to was that um, if a request for a tree removal comes to this commission because the, there's a conflict with the sidewalk repair or sidewalk, the root sidewalk conflict, and they've actually repaired that sidewalk before on their own. Normally, we would have said, okay, well, we'll cut down the tree, but we didn't have any way to track if they actually even repaired their sidewalk on their own. So now, the way it happens is if they come with that request, they get actually um, put to the top of the sidewalk repair policy, sidewalk repair priority list. Is that right? Shelly, you can chime in here. Uh, they get placed in a category. I, oh. I didn't bring that note, but it is a category that puts them in a, in a higher priority. Higher priority. Special category mm -hmm. um, you know the benefits are that you guys have already heard the tree seen it and you have given you wanted to keep the tree that's right. the goal of that if you want to take down a tree it's dead it's dying it has other issues then those aren't going to be those priority um, sidewalk repairs but it's really that situation where you guys get caught this is a beautiful tree it's mm -hmm. torn up the sidewalk we want to keep the tree 
but they've already repaired their, their sidewalk one time. So that puts them into this category that would help get their uh, sidewalk repair completed. Yeah, and personally I really like that because it changes the financial incentive. Instead we're paying for sidewalk repairs instead of for trees to get cut down. So um, the other, so that was one thing that was agreed to, right, procedurally. And so my question to Shelley then as we go through this is how can we make sure that that's actually, that actually happens and how can we somehow put that into some kind of statement that is codified somewhere in the city? We will put that into this policy. Great. So we'll, yeah, just like there's other notes in there under okay. that one section is that you have that, you can make that recommendation. Okay, great. Okay. We have the wording from Mark someplace. I yeah, we do. I just great. didn't bring it. From the one situation we discussed it. So the next time we have this, I'll bring that exact language or um, if we edit the current policy, you right. can add it and you guys can review it. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about were just some of my initial, my Gino and I are the subcommittee's initial proposed changes to that language of that policy. And so you see, if you guys pull out the policy, we can just, I just wanna go through them really quickly. Um, and then we can talk more about them or we can talk about them as we go. So maybe I'll pause after one and see if there's questions. Um, one of the things for just in terms of the title was Shelley recommended this and I think it's a really good idea is instead of street tree removal policy, street tree retention policy. <laughs> I would suggest street tree removal and retention policy. Okay, just to make it more clear. Tree re it would be confusing. People will say, well, I want to remove the tree. Why am I applying? Yeah, I have comments on this too. I think maybe we, we continue and then we can okay. discuss. Um, all right, so and then section 2.1, if we, if we go down to that section, non-emergency city tree criteria, um, that's where I thought we could include some of that DPW language. So I don't know that I really have a, um, so okay, so let me just go through it. 2.1C, it talks about the city tree at the time of request removal has damaged this adjacent sidewalk to an extent that it can, constitutes a tripping hazard and the city tree has caused the property owner to repair the subject si sidewalk on at least one previous occasion as proven by documentation or determined by the urban for forester's inspection. This is what we often saw in front of our commission, right? And so now with this new change, I'm suggesting some language like further the Department of Public Works has repaired the sidewalk at least one previous occasion due to damage from tree roots and has mitigated for tree root damage by realigning or ramping sidewalks around or over roots. So John, I'd love your comments on that at some point, but this is just, so we can maybe just go to the next one. There's not that, there's not that many. The next one is section 2.4. Um, and this is the staff report. There's no, um, this is 2.4 and I'm adding, I'm adding another subsection D. There is no subsection D I'm adding. And the reason why is there's a reference to the staff report in section 2.4 C, but there's no sort of um, description of what that staff report should include. And I thought it would be very helpful and other cities do this too, to have information about canopy size and trunk size um, to, um, and I think Shelley made this point, is if a property owner is coming to us and saying that they've repaired their sidewalk before, we want to make sure we have evidence of that. So, so previous sidewalk permits, repair permits, previous tree pruning permits, if, if any, or sewer lateral, that's not sewer later, sewer lateral repairs. And then, and then I think number four particularly is important, assessment of illegal pruning or tree topping. Because we've gotten these trees that come here sometimes that have been topped and they say my tree's dead and that's why they want it removed but they may have damaged it and so here we are paying for a tree removal that they've damaged that they've caused the death of, potentially. And then number five, estimated cost to rehabilitate damaged tree. I just wanted there to be this thoughtfulness about if, how, how, bad is, how bad is a tree? Should we put money into cutting it down or should we see if we can put some money into rehabilitating? Um, that's all I have for the policy right now. And the other changes I have proposed are for the um, application, that form that the property owner fills out. 
Does anybody have any questions in, at this point? I just wanted to make sure I'm understanding what you're suggesting for the language in 2.1. Uh -huh. You're not recommending that in lieu of what's written there, but in addition to what's written there, so that Correct. they would have done it once themselves, and the DPW has already also Correct. done it. Okay. Yep. You are referring to if their sidewalk gets repaired by the city, right? Not and I don't know if this is the way to sort of codify that. I think it's, it's not yeah, really. Once you once the city, I, this is in the sidewalk policy, which I don't have with me at the moment, but it is that if the city replaces the sidewalk, they get a letter that tells them now it's back to your responsibility um, in terms of we've done it once, we're not doing it again. Mm -hmm. um, so are you wanting to include that here because if the tree lifts it again, that they did, that's that's it or? I don't know. Oh, okay. So maybe, maybe that wasn't a good way to, I was trying to figure out how we could take what Mark Hurley sort of agreed to, but I don't actually know that I'm thinking about it right now. I don't know that this, that's explaining that anyway. So that may hold, be a whole other thing, and that's a question, actually. That's a question that we should, we should discuss. Okay, so you actually are thinking about the Mark Hurley thing? Yes. Okay, okay. just. That's yes, so any advice you have <laughs> about how to, you know, and maybe it's not including that at all, but. <clears throat> yeah, it was a response to a specific situation, but that could possibly come up again. Um, but I think maybe the wording here shouldn't be Department of Public Works repairing and usually refer to just pub as public works, not the DPW. Okay. Um, or just should, the city. It should just say repair. Okay. The sidewalk has been repaired previously instead of by the city because. Oh. Well, no, but that's the point is that the city has also taken on that response. Shelley. Oh, I was, I just remembered now that it's all coming back, was when we did talk about with the Mark Hurley is that talking about with the um, this policy of setting a limit, that sidewalk has been repaired within the past 10 years or giving it a, a date because um, there have been sidewalk repairs that have taken place 20 years ago, but is that just natural? The tree has eventually gotten really large or is it because oh. it's a really troubled tr tree that within a short period of time it's caused lift okay. after you just replaced it 10 years ago, which is following along with the Berkeley model of when they get those triggers where within 10 years then the city would pay for it. If it happens again in another 10 years, the city will up pay for it again. Mm -hmm. You know, they have that, that schedule. So it's really identifying that this tree probably has some issues with roots because yeah. If we give them this pass, they get their sidewalk repaired, and then it happens again in another 10 years, then maybe the commission needs to be considering taking out that tree. Yeah, and you know, this is that's a really good point, and it's something that I think we need to discuss. And you know, I think maybe instead of um, because I think Shelley and I need to do another pass at this, and John also, and to edit it and come back with like a track changes to the policy. So maybe we can skip ahead and just start talking about some of those issues and include that as one of the issues. Is this time limit um, for sidewalk repair as a, as a reason. I'm the Todd, you're my um, historical person. The, I think the last time I went through the revision, that was the most helpful way is the subcommittee took a, a stab at editing the actual policy with the strike through and then bringing that back and that kind of initiates this discussion. Okay. So maybe that's what we can work on. Yeah, so why don't we do that? So why don't we just go ahead and jump to the questions, to it's some of the big picture questions that you know we can figure out how to actually change the policy. And I think the first one is how do we codify those verbal agreements? And Shelly, you and I can talk about that, right? Would you say? Yeah, so it, okay. it's in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. The policy will be approved by council by a resolution, so it is the tree removal policy. So once we, it gets included in here in terms of that moving a sidewalk. Um, okay. Public works. Okay. And then, um, go ahead. Um, I have a question about the sidewalk repair because earlier there was some discussion about alternative materials. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm wondering, does the homeowner have any sort of stake or leverage in that decision about how it's repaired or it's just going to be repaired sidewalk to sidewalk or how does that sort of come into play and what are those materials? I'm not the person really to answer that, but I, I can give you general idea. I, when the city's re repairing the sidewalk, it's just gonna be concrete, same everywhere. So there's no um, al 
alternative materials, but if a property owner wanted to repair it themselves and use alternative materials, I think it would need to be approved by um, engineer or, or someone, and um, that's basically how that would work. So at this point, the city, as far as I know, we, we're not using any alternative materials. Does anyone recollect what those were referring to when it was mentioned? Is it like, yeah, I don't know. I think we could, well, the, the city doesn't have a material, but uh, Mark was attended one of our meetings, so I could look up which meeting that was, and then you can watch, and he, he kind of gave yeah, a presentation. The truth is there, there's no silver bullet on this yet. It hasn't yet been developed, found one that, that's going to work. Um, if you get something that is flexible and allows the tree to grow as, as you like, it's not very durable and it, it, it tends to lift up on the corners or this, that, there's okay. all, so, so I, the idea I propose has nothing to do with this, but, but was uh, along that path behind uh, the field at uh, the high school, um, that's, that's a horrible <laughs> asphalt path, let's yeah. do tests, let's, but th that's neither here nor there. But, oh, but that's an there interesting there idea. A, mm -hmm. There isn't a silver bullet yet for that, so. Uh, it's and I think, case by case. Yeah, and I think Mark said that he would look into that, but yeah. I think there was even a turnover with the staff there that, you know, <laughs> so I think it's been a longer process. But that kind of brings me to a question. I'm skipping over the second bullet point <clears throat> there, but there is an upcoming bid request from DPW for the sidewalk repair program. The first one, I think, right? It's the first rollout of it. So I just wondered if it did include... I didn't either you had to like pay thirty dollars to get the plans so I couldn't just download it online. I'm wondering if it does include this requirement to you know trim the tree roots and it, it does. Okay. It, it requires the contractor to have a an arborist great um, to review or and or to consult with me whenever there's large roots or questions um, or it's not straightforward. So Okay. But it, there's there is provisions for dealing with trees. The, the engineer working with it is, talk, we talk about this a lot, and he's he's all for curving out sidewalks, Great. And ramping in some cases, and that sort of thing. So fantastic. Yeah. Okay. I just we're we going to open this for public comment. Not that I know whether there is or not, but sure. I just just felt like we're still doing questions. I didn't know if we we're yet moving. You're still going through oh, your list. Yeah. Well, you know what? We can. I was just going to go through my questions, but. <clears throat> Uh, I don't know. I don't know, don't know how Shelley. How should? I, how do you think I should? Why don't you go through? This is basically the staff report this memo. Report. Like, okay. why don't we work kind through that and then okay. let everybody be able to comment on anything that's okay. And then um, section two point one point three. Is that oh, B? Must be B. Should this section still two point one point three? I don't know where I got that from. D. I'm trying to help. D? Thank you, D, yeah, that's yeah. right, okay. I, I figured she was dictating, <laughs> 3D. So out. this is just a question um, because it says at the end of D, um, additionally has been determined that um, Parks and Rec Commission that alternatives of realigning the sidewalk or other practices in order to retain the tree are neither reasonable nor cost effective. I just wanted to put out there, what is that cost effect? What's our criteria or threshold for cost effective? Sorry, okay, let's go back. 2.1, yeah, page two. 2. 1, or, yeah, 2.1D. Mm -hmm. D. On the, uh, on the policy, not the application, on the policy. Uh, and what's the question? The question is at the end of the section there, it talks about, um, this this sort of valuation of whether or not retaining the tree is reasonable nor cost effective. Um, and so I just, oh, sorry, alternatives to realigning the sidewalk or other practices in order to retain the tree are neither reasonable nor cost effective. I, I think that should stay there. I think that's a good. Um, yeah, I, I, I understand, but I'm just wondering what the criteria is for cost effective. Hmm. It, it's, it's, the, it's the voice of the people of Albany. It's us to decide. That's, okay. That's, we're you feel like you're giving our leverage. We're okay. Representing our people, uh, the, the the citizens, and and it's our judgment. Because I think in the staff report, then we don't get that information. We don't necessarily know what that cost would be to retain the tree. It's now. Um, actually, for this, if I can clarify, for this one, 
this is not in your hands. You've said the tree should stay, this sidewalk is, or the sidewalk is gonna be repaired. And when John is on site, if he determines that that sidewalk repair is gonna damage oh, I the see. roots, he can then- No, that's, that's different. Yeah, that's different. Um, the, the clause she's talking about is the part that says, it has been determined by the Parks and Rec Commission, us, um, that mm -hmm. alternatives are not realistic in this situation. Like you'd have to move the house or, or um, uh, you- There's a retaining wall in the way. There's a retaining or so. wall in the way. There's, there's, you can't say you've got to reline the sidewalk because you can't always reline the sidewalk. It's just not practical. No, this is just that, the, that he, he would say like, by trimming the roots down, so far, it's gonna kill the tree, and at that point, he could say the tree should be removed. Right, but then additionally, oh, but do both things have to happen? So, so what it's saying is that, um, mm -hmm. basically, if we could move the sidewalk, we might not have to trim the roots. Right. Or, or we have to trim the roots unless we move the sidewalk, and then the Parks and Rec Commission, well, we can't realistically move the right. sidewalk. Right, right. Um, that's kind of the two pieces fall into place. Right, If but we can move the sidewalk, we do that. Um, that's preferred. Uh, but if it's just not realistic in that situation, then, then we don't. That was that was the reasoning behind that. Okay. Do others read that it? That, that way? is confusing. Next month, that is we're going to have this situation. Are we really? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. I mean, it is confusing because the first part is written for an on-site evaluation. John is there, and he makes the determination, and he could say we need to, we're going to have to take out this tree because it's going to kill the tree. To, take out these roots, sure, sure. right? But then the other one that's saying that you have determined that should have already happened ahead of time, that wouldn't be an on-site decision, right? Well, I mean, it's when the application is considered. Uh, when the application is considered, John comes in and says, well, we've looked at it, and um, uh, in order to repair the sidewalk, we're gonna have to cut the roots back, uh, and then we can also say at that point, you know, the question always comes up, well, what about realigning the sidewalk? Then it comes and, and it says, well, that's not realistic. That's just part of that discussion. That's when it happens. Well, I mean, I'm particularly, just because the sidewalk roll that's going to happen, I'm a bit concerned about not being able to see any of those situations. So is it the case that if the sidewalk's opened up, and you, and actually the sidewalk, well, usually, you know, if it, say, is, is damaged, there's nothing to do with the, the tree root, and you see, because because Mark had also said that in this first round he wouldn't focus on those locations that are tricky tree locations. He would focus on all the ones that are no-brainer, good to go. But if, if you did open up a sidewalk and say, oh, wow, well, this tree root needs to be cut back in order for us to redo the sidewalk, the sidewalk's open. I, I don't have time to keep it open and bring it to the commission. I'm just wondering, are we going to see that? I'm, I'm curious if that's going to happen. I'm going to get, you can project into the future, but I can just imagine... You're saying if, if I feel that the tree needs to be removed once yeah. the walk is lifted? Yeah. Look at it. Um, I, I, mean, I would say it would have to be pretty extreme for that. Most of the trees, I, I looked through a prelim, preliminary list of all the, the really bad tree uh, related sidewalk um, locations for the project, and there's one that I think needs to be removed that's gonna come up next month. One out of, I think I looked at the top 100 at the time, the, the list has changed. Since that's really helpful. So. It's unusual to be surprised. Um, and, and if there's a question, um, it's probably already been before the commission and the decision has been John will invest in, inspect it when the mm -hmm. sidewalk gets up and the decision will be made there. I don't, I yeah. don't remember a situation where it's been a surprise. That I see. So happen. as if we've already reviewed it here, reviewed and then it. so he's going to still make that assessment. We know that he's going to make that assessment at that point. Okay. We're going to conditionally deny this, and John's yeah. going to investigate when. There okay. Was one. Yeah. Two years ago, I guess that was right. that situation, and I wanted the tree removed for other reasons besides just the sidewalk, even though the sidewalk was lifted kind of two feet off the ground from the tree, but it, it also was split down the middle. So. Right, right. But the decision was, there was a petition, and the decision was that once the concrete's lifted, when I, I go out and look at it, if I decide it still needs to come out. But so. I think Julia might be onto something there that, that I think it, it could be different going forward with the city proactively going out and repairing sidewalks. It may be a little different. Whereas in the past, it was the homeowner uh, say, noticing the lift and the wanting the tree taken care of one way or the other. Uh, so if the city's going out and doing all this work, um, then could we maybe have more surprises? 
or are you also going out and evaluating things? I think in this case, I'm definitely going out when the, for the city repair project. I'm going out ahead of time. Um, if, but, that's what I'm getting at. They're, they have evaluated every single location they're going to do, and they have an entire report for each sidewalk location. And part of that, I think you have input on the urban forester side of it in terms of yeah. is it oh, a tree okay. conflict? Yes. So there's a large manual of the engineer has gone through every site and analyzed how much sidewalk, is it a conflict of tree, and involved John or an urban forester. Oh, okay. I, I didn't realize that the urban forester had been included in that process. Thanks. Yeah. The engineer who is in charge of the project is about as far away as you and I are <laughs> in the office, so we yell back and forth about. So your understanding is the next, the first batch are not going to involve trees, but they, they. It sounds like there will yeah. be one that. If if there's a tree, possible tree removal, or the owner has wants the tree removed or whatever, it's being pushed aside until next year so that we can get through the first round and get a lot of sidewalks repaired. That's the the uh, priority. Okay. But okay. next year they might come up. And th there's one this year, I, maybe it's for next year's work. That's, um, I think we're going to re review it next month at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next sort of area to dis that I wanted to discuss is what kind of tree removals does this commission not see? And, um, you know, I think although I wasn't here for some of the discussion about the tree that I wasn't able to <laughs> be a part of the discussion for. You know, I think one of the questions there was like, why was this, did this commission not see that request before it was granted, the removal request? And um, I'll answer that John, his evaluation was that it was a dead tree and he felt it was imminent, de defining imminent danger, I think is the question. And he felt it was an emergency tree removal. Um, at that point, but that did bring up all of the other items. How can we um, tag trees that might be imminent danger that they're coming out tomorrow? How do we notify neighbors that something like that is going on? And can we now give tree removal companies an actual official permit so that they, you could show they've gone through some sort of process for those type trees? Well, but I mean, if it was an imminent danger, then why wasn't it taken down? If, right, like, I guess I'm just, it doesn't, the, but it wasn't taken down because so it wasn't being, that much of an imminent being danger. A dead tree is an imminent danger. It doesn't mean tomorrow it's going to come down, though. What it, that's what you you have it here. What constitutes imminent danger? Uh -huh. What does that mean exactly? If, if it's the way good. I interpreted it, it's a dead tree. It had no future. It's not going anywhere. It's starting to drop branches and could possibly come down completely because the um, majority I, of the trunk was already dead and bark is peeling off and. No, I understand. I understand that you, your evaluation of being dead, but then sure. it should be removed. I mean, I guess what I'm saying is like, oh. it, but then it was okay for us to wait. So um, if it was okay for us to wait till this, then why couldn't we have gone through it's this still process an imminent and come before danger us? In my mind. It, it could have gone through the process, yes. It could have gone through the process. Yes, exactly. I just want that to be. And that was. That's why it did, yeah. Okay, so I would just personally, I would appreciate it always going through this process when that judgment is not so certain because. That's what we're here for, really. This commission yeah. is here to evaluate those tree removal requests, even when they are dead. You know, even it, just as long as there's not a, like, literally. Not every tree, but yeah, I mean, there, there are more imminent, more uh, immediate. And you can't always tell. And, yeah, and, and you can't always tell. Hard to tell for sure. So, I mean, we're in the thinking uh, liability, city liability, public safety. If Aileen was here, she'd, she'd talk about right, the tree but the, that I, just crashed that? on her block for with no warning. Um, of course, but then the, it should be removed. Then it shouldn't be a question. But, right? but, then, but what we're saying is you can't predict these things. So if, if you're if you're mm, waiting until the tree is going to drop tomorrow, you've waited far too long because it could drop. Right, but then why wasn't it removed? It should, it should have been. The intention obviously was to remove it, but because we had concern and we discussed it and decided, well, let's talk about this at the meeting and. This actually okay. is the first situation yeah. time this has come up. Usually when there's been an emergency tree removal, it's been dropping big branches or something. Okay. It's been a, it has been a, a potential threat. Um, I haven't, this one I think was a little kind of a judgment call that th this is gonna be removed regardless and it is already dropping branches. So 
yeah, maybe yeah. this one probably should have gone. I just, I just don't want there to be slippery slope, and that's what we're accountable for. And I think that's, you know, my position as an appointed official is to represent the public interest. Sure. So I just want to make sure I, I totally get it that we don't want to be having hazardous trees there. But we also, if it's not clear cut and we have a chance to put it through the commission, then I'd like it to see it. But my other question is like. Would we, so say it was cut down because it was deemed imminent danger, would we have ever seen it through this commission as like a maybe post-mortem sort of? Yeah, you report? get those, uh, it's in this policy that says that you get a, you do. Okay. an email about it. That's why you got the, the tree fell down in the park. I usually send those. Okay. Um, and we don't have too many of them, but it is written in this policy the, what we have to do to notify you that a tree has been removed because it was dangerous or imminent danger. There are small trees that don't make it that I just pull out myself that are not considered trees by right. the policy that get replanted. No, I understand. That's yep, I understand. Point. So it says within 60 days, it's B, it's section 1B. Now 60 days is a long time because... Just rarely, yeah. That, w that would have been the case in this uh, if I was just came back that day and I hadn't talked to John. And he may have thought it was imminent danger and he was taking out the tree, but I didn't know and I show up and then I think, well, he still has 60 days to report that. So maybe that time frame shouldn't be that long to, to have John report that. Maybe there should be a pre-report, like I'm about to take out this tree. Oh, to report to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. yes. I mean, that, that could be an easy way to fix it, right? That there's some other sort of... You at least get a notification. Yeah. Of the, mm -hmm. I think that's a good... Communication. I think I just acted on that tree. I just looked at it. I, I got a contractor mm -hmm. to go out and look at it and said, go ahead and do the work. So. Pretty sure John's not gonna do that again. But. <laughs> yeah. um, Can I point out one thing too that I noticed when we were discussing this issue, is that in the non-emergency tree, it does say no permit to remove any living city tree will be issued. And I don't know if we wanna make sure we discuss that because in that case then this tree's dead. In John's mind, he doesn't need a removal permit because it's not a living tree. Well, that, that was, I mean, I think I'm, I'm hearing both sides of this. I want to also feel that the staff are empowered to do their job when it is clear that it meets these qualifications. So I think I'm understanding that what you're saying is if it meets the qualifications because it's an imminent danger, we should be moving ahead. And, but, and, and in all the other cases, it should be coming here because that's the point of the commission. Yeah, and I think there is that slippery, like that question of judgment of what is imminent danger. Clearly, it wasn't such an imminent danger that we still went ahead with it, even though there was a public, like you shouldn't, I guess what I'm saying is just because the neighbor says, oh, I, I didn't know about this. Well, it's an imminent danger. Sorry, we're cutting it down. But if it was actually, if there's ability for staff to pause, that means that it wasn't really an imminent danger, is my point. So I think, I, yeah, and if I could just... Uh, I definitely was on the street that day, so I was I was confused, and John and I have talked through this, and I think it was a learning experience for both okay. of us, because that's not a typical imminent danger. I can give a great example. There was a tree in um, Terrace Park, one of the other pines that were, was there, and the former uh, urban forester, he had noticed there was a new lift in the back of that tree. He knew the tree, and he was really concerned based on its location that it was could possibly come down. He didn't know when, but it, it definitely, there was a change in, in his mind. He wanted to take it down, and we took it down right away. Mm -hmm. It was an imminent danger for him based on kids playing, people walking on a path. And so those have been more of the typical sure. uh, ones that we've seen. And I, I, I mean, I know that tree because it's across the street from my house, and it's not that big. So, you know, anyway, so in terms of being a hazard. But, um, okay, so thank you. That I guess that obviously I think we've discuss that but um so tree replanting i don't know Th shelly this is not a, under our purview is that right i'm just wondering i mean especially when, since we just talked about this approved street tree list i'm just wondering um oh sorry sorry no never mind um what i just wanted to make note of is that other cities um don't require just a one-to-one -one for tree uh, replacement, that they look at the size of the canopy or size of the trunk of the tree and might actually require like three additional trees to be replanted to the one that's removed. So that's just something for us to consider. On their private property or? The street trees. Street tree. Because yeah. I mean, I think in Palo Alto, perhaps they have larger lots. 
No, but it's uh, it's on the street tree. It's just street tree. Yeah, it doesn't have to be on their property. Oh, okay. Because yes. I was like, I don't yes. think you could put that many on my. Right, 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 right. It doesn't what, have to. What, thank you. Do, what do they approve as a removal? I mean, this it sounds like. Yeah, it does sound like if it tree. might be for construction or something. So yes. Trees dropping leaves in my gutter. I want to cut it down. Well, you're gonna. I don't replace, know. Replace, yeah, replace, that's a good replace, question. Replace. That is a good question. I and for frankly, us, well, there's there's um, there's not space for many trees and most you know most properties there's room for one tree maybe two mm -hmm. I, I would corner property but I'd rather see a program encouraging and supporting the planting of trees in general rather than a requirement that if you remove one big one you've got to plant because you may not you may live on one of those little tiny lots and you only really have room for one tree well but again it doesn't have to be in on their lot it could be in like a different park area but you make a good point like do we want to you know make that property owner the one I think what I I think I would love to see a tree planting policy, some kind of tree planting encouragement. Oh, there's been a lot. We can... There's been quite a bit over the years. Okay, so I'd like to learn more about that, I guess, and as a commission, as we're allowing these tree removals to happen, but we're not having any sort of encouragement of the plant replanting. Well, there's replanting whenever, in, in almost every case is tree planting. There's a couple of locations where maybe a, a tree was right on top of a sewer or right in front of a stop sign or something. Uh, yeah, but I think that doesn't get to the one-to-one -one it's not one to one. You you know you chop down a fifty year old tree with a beautiful canopy for what you know. Well, we don't. We chop down a tree that. Well, now we're not because the sidewalk repair thing has been sort of resolved. Well, but I'm just we saying. Didn't either. I mean, we didn't cut down live trees just because somebody wanted it cut down. It, it had to. No, I had to well, prove it. That I've it, seen some come through here. Th there have I've been there have been some big beautiful trees that were just devastating to the property or this, and we have had to take them. Yes, down. definitely. You know, camphor, camphors, I come to mind, which I, I love those trees, but um, but I don't think it's realistic to make that a requirement in a town with the lots like Albany. Um, uh, but I do like the idea of just just programs, and it might fall on John to organize these to uh, to have. You know, we've had uh, uh, blocks focusing and everybody, you know, this mm -hmm. weekend, free plant a street tree, uh, yeah. sorts of things. And um, maybe that's another eagle project. <laughs> yeah, or Civic Sparks Fellow or something. Yeah, I like that idea. Well, the way we get additional trees now when there's uh, construction, remodeling or something, planning sends me, sends a arbor's review for me to go look at the property and either I recommend or require a tree protection plan for an existing tree, or I have them plant as many trees as I feel will fit on the property. So great. You know, there's two, two or three at the most in some of the properties, but uh, generally one tree, if it fits. There's some properties where there's not even room for one tree, but mm -hmm. is um, is part of your assessment of the current treescape in Albany? Does that include assessment of how much tree capacity we're currently at. So in other words, we're not a very large geographically, we're not a large city. Um, and we have what green spaces we have. I'm just curious, like how, how close are we to our tree capacity in terms of um, street trees? Yes, but other spaces, because I feel like some requirements might be limited by that. That's a good question. Um, that's being done kind of piecemeal right now, but um, you're, you're talking about parks and the greenway and that sort of thing. And sure, I, I, there's lots of planting opportunity there. And um, eventually, I think I, I will propose a plan for so some of that. It sounds like uh, you were suggesting that perhaps it would be nice to have one of our educational sessions in an upcoming meeting, especially with so many new commissioners, be about what currently happens for encouraging sure. tree planting, what are opportunities, what might be some future opportunities, just so we can kind of become more educated about that side of it as well. Yeah, I'll suggest that as an agenda item for future meeting. Thank you. Sam. Yeah, that sounds great. On my block, maybe 10, 12 years ago, my neighbor went door to door trying to get everybody to, mm -hmm. there, there must have been some, and so she got a lot of them, plant, uh, 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 more than ever before had, had been planted. Uh, no, somebody. Who, I, I hate to say this because we're having a great discussion, but I want to do a little time check here. I know okay, we thank have, you. We have an yeah, it's almost member 10 to who's 9. interested in another item, and I just thought we might. Yes, you're right. Okay, so the other two, the other two big ones, which maybe we can. Well, this is a street. This is a big one. It's a payment and fines, and I think we resolved a lot of that through the sidewalk repair. 
But um, there is a question of, and maybe I just don't know when, given that we've re sort of resolved the sidewalk repair conflict, I don't know when else we would the, um, be paying It's the for pruning tree. permit. Uh, ah, those, that's what it is. The definition of whose tree is it and can I that's do right. things to it. And, and the short answer is that we had a long meeting a while ago about this, about all this, a planting program, how that can all tie in together, and then how can the city enforce, since we don't have code enforcement officers per se, um, things like that if you don't have a permit to prune. And so we had some really good ideas that I think if you give uh, staff a chance, will be John, it's one of John's tasks to put kind of that all together. Okay. And uh, community development was investigating how we could um, impose fines and that process. Um, and so it's great. It's like three different departments. Great. So it's in the works and okay. Cause uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll, and the, as we do the redo the street tree policy, maybe we can have some reference to that there. Okay. And then finally, this was actually John's great idea, which was, that gentleman spoke about before was this idea of a heritage tree ordinance, which, um, other cities do. And Albany has a landmark tree ordinance, which is interesting. It's um, uh, landmark tree is 18 inches in diameter or greater. greater. And, and if you have one of those kind of trees, then you can get an exception to the parking requirement. But that's really all it says. So, because th there's a parking space requirement, yeah, yeah. like you have that two, whatever the length is, that's the only way, that's the only, um, that's the reason that landmark tree ordinance exists. It's not because to, for any other reason, but to protect the tree in those cases. It's a big motivation. I understand. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, so John put it forward to, should we consider a heritage tree ordinance? And John, can you speak to that? Um, sure. Um, I think mo most of in Albany, opportunity for nice large trees are, is on private property. property and yards. And in the last year, I, I've seen a hundred, about 110 foot incense cedar being removed. I talked to the crew, why are you doing this? Because my boss told me to do it. Well, what's wrong with the tree? Nothing. I'm like, then why are you taking it down? And the, the, the guy came down out of the tree and said, I, I, I know what you're saying. I agree with you. but. You know, my boss told me that the property owner wants it removed. You know, and another one, a, about a hundred foot redwood tree. The owner was there. I asked him, "Why are you getting? Why are you taking this tree down? Because it's too big. It's a hundred and ten, hundred year old redwood. You know, <laughs> um, you know, it doesn't. Well, it's too big. It's too late. I'm, I want it removed. That's it. You know, and there's nothing we can do about it. I had a call recently. Uh, an oak tree was being removed in front of a. First, I had a call. Is I get these calls, you know, do I need a permit to remove a tree on private property? And I usually try to not try to talk them out of it or ask them why or and try to stall and see if they change their mind or consider pruning it instead of removing. So I had a call about an oak tree. Um, I said, why are you doing it? Oh, it's blocking the light sensor. The owner wants it removed. <laughs> I said, well, why not just prune it? Well, oh, I don't know. The owner wants it removed. So they went ahead and started removing it. Neighbors called up. I went out there, mm. and I look around. There's no light sensor. There's no light. There's no reason to remove the tree. So it was in front of an apartment building. They just didn't like a big oak tree, you know. One of the few nice live oak so, trees in the city. So this frustrates me every time this happens, and I think we need something. A lot of cities have some kind of heritage tree or landmark tree or, or some kind of ordinance to not to totally protect and take away private property rights, but to make it a little more difficult, you know, to go through a process to say, is there a reason? And this, yeah, and often it's about particular, either particular species or particular size. I'm wondering, would this be uh, under the Parks and Rec, yes, Shelley? That's my question, yeah. Sounds like a city ordinance. Yeah, sounds yeah. like a city ordinance. Mm -hmm. Right, it, it is, It's and it's not part of the, obviously our removal policy. Right, right. Um, so, so what I see is we have the overall uh, uh, retention policy. That's right. That's retention, true. Retention. <laughs> part of which, a sub part of which is the removal application process. Right. That's, that's what I see happening ultimately, but that's a, it's more than, that's not what we're going to do. It's what right. the council's going to do or whatever, but we can be part of it. Yeah. So maybe we can recommend that council or 
environment sus sustainability com committee I, or something? I brought this up it. with Nicole. She told me I should discuss it with the commission. So this commission. Well, we, maybe we can put on a future agenda item or something. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Technic is, I mean, it's not on our work plan, technically. Yeah, well, we're um, going to talk about our work plan. Yeah. Okay. So we have to ask again for permission. But then, you know, if, if the request from the city manager is for the commission to work on that or the council would like us to take that on and write an ordinance for Heritage Tree, and then in that you would have the procedures for that, which ha may have its own removal process. Okay. Come before us. Thanks. So I guess, I mean, that's a lot for us. So thank you for your time. <laughs> and I think since we're going to, Shelly and John and I are going to go, and Gino are going to go back and actually do the track changes to mock this up. Maybe, I mean, if anybody has any questions right now or discussion, we can discuss this again once that time comes. That's we okay. should have public comment. Oh, sorry. Public comment. I'm sorry. Jeez. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I tried it. I did. You heard me. <laughs> well, that's, it's okay. Okay, Ed Fields again. Um, I may not be able to make your next meeting, so or when this comes up. So, but I, in particular, my concern has to do with the um, the middle of page one. Uh, the initial proposed changes to the city tree removal policy and procedures, and in particular, the section 2.1c include the following, which you have discussed a little bit. I think I understand that that you want to add that. And so since I'm in that situation, I would like to see a flow chart, okay? A real simple, basic flow chart. And I've just started one, but, but I don't think I know what I'm doing here. So my crepe myrtle damaged my sidewalk, okay? I repaired it. I paid to repair it. The urban forester came out and I think did a little tree pruning, root pruning, and there is a curve in the sidewalk to accommodate uh, some of the, the root mass of the tree. Okay, the tree is damaging my sidewalk again. Okay, it's small. It's very small right now. That's why I'm concerned about it. So now, the next time I have to wait till it's a trip hazard. I can't say anything now. I gotta wait till it's a trip hazard. So that already, is problematic, okay? Then what do I do? I come before the commission, so I've gotta pay a big fee and come before the commission and request to remove the tree. Okay, if you grant it, if you grant the request, then I pay to repair the sidewalk again, right? That's, well, let me finish. Well, this is how I'm seeing it, but what I'm asking you to do at a future meeting or subcommittee is to, is to work through this, okay. If you don't grant my request to remove the tree, then I assume that that language there implies that public works will then repair the sidewalk. And then the next time, if it damages the sidewalk, if we haven't been able to accommodate it with re, you know, redoing the sidewalk or root pruning, then because the city has done it, then the city will more or less take care of the whole thing, either keep the tree, remove the tree, repair the sidewalk again, at city expense. I mean, this is this is what I want to see, right? I want you guys to so that the policy is really clear, and we can understand it. What 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 happens to a homeowner now? Um, you you mentioned some removal policies, and I I looked at two. I looked at Palo Altos and Berkeley's some time ago, not recently. And Berkeley says the first repair. This is. Uh, the city tree causes repeated sidewalk damage, who's responsible for the repairs? And Berkeley says the first repair is shared 50-50 between the city and the property owner. First repair. If additional repairs are needed within 10 years, city will pay 100%. If a third repair is needed, city will pay 100%. And the property owner has the option to request the tree be removed at property owner expense. Um, and Palo Alto, I spoke to them again some time ago, and my impression is that it's, it's next to impossible to get a tree removed in Palo Alto. I mean, unless it's dead, diseased, imminent hazard, right? On the other hand, the city of Palo Alto takes care of all the sidewalk repair. So they're both in the same court, and that's fine. I like that. But what we have here is that you get to decide that I can't take out the tree, but I gotta keep repairing the sidewalk. And so now the public works 
a separate, kind of a whole separate track here of city trying to repair sidewalks, the recent measure, whatever it was P, whatever we passed, is now kind of helping with, with that issue. So that's, okay, I'll try to wrap this up really quickly. Um, I guess the thing, the thing that I feel about the crepe myrtles, and, and I'm, I mean, I love trees. I've spent a lot of time and effort fighting to preserve trees in the public sector. Okay, I mean, like fighting at city council meetings and planning and zoning meetings to preserve trees, but I, I'll just stop there. When I, when I see at the few meetings I come to, I mean, somebody comes in here with a, a beautiful tree, you know, a 50, 75 year old tree that their sidewalk is like this. I mean, that's a tough call. We'd love, we, the city, all of us, the citizens, we'd love to keep trees like that. And if we can and repair the sidewalk, reroute the sidewalk, we should do it. These crepe myrtles are not those kind of trees. As John points out, they're basically shrubs that we prune so that you know we don't, don't have a bunch of limbs popping out in people's eyeballs, right? They're not that kind of tree. I mean, I, I initially got involved, I spoke to John. I wanted to get the tree removed so that I could plant a new tree sooner. That was, that was just so you guys understand where I'm coming from. 10 years from now, after the city repairs the sidewalk and you say, maybe I can replace my tree, it'll just be a little bit bigger. I mean, it's a nice tree. It's very tannic leaves, by the way, that stay in your sidewalk. That is a negative. <laughs> um, I'd rather have a nice tree 10 years from now rather than take out the crepe myrtle 10 years from now. So that's, that's my thoughts on the subject. Thanks. Thank you. I just had one comment in re reaction to that, which was I thought that there was a, a third repair in that scenario that he just stated. Like he repaired it twice and then the city repaired it. And I thought it was he repairs it once, then the city repairs it, then it goes back to the homeowner for the third one. He's repaired it once. This is all proposed. None of this is, the city hasn't had any money for sidewalk repairs. So okay, right. All, but I mean, what in we're the considering, new what okay. we're considering, yeah. yeah. Any comments or questions from the commission? Um, I, I thought that was, points were well made. Uh, who would put together, if the city was to put together a flow chart like that, would that be under, whose purview would that be? I think, well, go ahead, Shelley. We've taken a few. Yeah, <laughs> we've done it. some. We've done some flow charting, and I think it came back to well, actually, we got to figure out this whole sidewalk repair thing. So it was actually now changed the flow chart. Uh, but I like that idea, graphically representing. Um, so I think until we get the repair policy finalized, then we can build off of that and create some kind of diagram. And Ed, I'll say I thought I understood it until you spoke. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think you did. I think I was wrong. <laughs> I, I think his point was a little bit more that as we determine yes. what the policy will be to develop a flow chart to make sure that it makes sense, right? So not to just wait until the end and then make a graphic, but to use it as a tool to inform how the policy is developed. Right, and I think that's how we've been using the flow chart. That's kind of how actually Shelley came up with, and actually the gentleman's comment from a previous meeting kind of came up with this. Mm -hmm. I think great solution. You know, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Like it. Any other comments? Um, one, I think I think the gentleman was saying that the Albany's repair is more restrictive on the sidewalk than Berkeley's and Palo Alto's. That Berkeley gives you more chances to for the city to pay for the repair, and Palo Alto does as well. Whose purview would that be to decide how many times uh, the city will do a repair? Currently, the city doesn't just do repairs, but since there's a sidewalk program, they're working on the most critical sidewalks that are in the most used areas, going to schools, Those that's all been determined. That's traffic and safety um, side of it. That's what they've been working on. Now, that's what Julie and I were working on with Public Works is when we get these really difficult situations that Mr. Fields described where it's a beautiful tree, we wanna keep the tree, the sidewalk has been lifted what can we do in order to um, 
it's kind of an incentive to keep this beautiful tree, knowing that we'll move you into this list to get on the sidewalk list. But once that sidewalk is repaired, whether it's just on the regular list or because there's a tree conflict, the city's gonna give you a piece of paper and say, okay, it's back to your responsibility to repair sidewalks, which is, which is in the ordinance, our municipal code. It's this homeowner's responsibility to maintain sidewalks. So if people wanted it more like the Berkeley model, where it sounds like where Berkeley does it three times, is, is my understanding, then they would need to go to the city council and try to get the ordinance changed? Um, yes, we'd have to, I mean, you're kind of going back, you know, we'd be going backwards. I have suggested, I appreciated uh, Mr. Field's comments the last time, and I have investigated the Berkeley model as well and proposed that. Um, but the sidewalk repair program is already moving, and um, the interest is to try to repair as many sidewalks as we can and then try to deal with these once in a while tree conflicts that we have. Um, and then we can probably revisit at that time, but the focus is being on, is using that money to repair as many sidewalks as possible rather than setting up a special tree fund for sidewalk tree conflicts. There's, there hasn't been city budget for sidewalk repair for years and years and years. There's a lot of pent up need and I think maybe as soon as that is done, then we can start having conversations about ongoing, um, you know, mm -hmm. maintenance, things like that. But we've got a lot of pent up demand to take care of first. Yeah, I help campaign for the measure and I've exactly. been waiting for it to start. Exactly. <laughs> and so I, I exactly. definitely see that, but okay. Yeah. But, but there's not enough money to do it all right now. But so we got to get rid of, get the glut of the worst out of the way. Then we'll be in the situation of perhaps proposing mm -hmm. something like, you know, the city taking on some of the responsibility for to repair the sidewalk in the interest of preserving a tree, which is a public good, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. <clears throat> Any other? Okay, so I think I'm gonna move to the next item because this was really just for discussion, right? Okay, uh, next item is, oops, sorry, where is that? <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. Oh, to discuss the um, potential Measure R funded projects for the Capital Improvement Program. The Commission will consider potential Measure R recreation playfield projects. So um, from the last meeting that we had this, which was the February meeting, I uh, put together the small chart because we had some questions on um, which of the current proposed possibilities um, would meet the recreation playfield classification that was in Measure R, the ballot text. So I gave you guys a ballot, actual ballot um, text, and, um, and I have been in contact with the city attorney of asking him how his opinion on some of the projects that have been proposed. So in the Measure R text, it's really, I think it's a great thing to read. I've, what I've highlighted is the um, recitals in section three, and this, this language in here is what we are basing our basic um, definition of recreation playfield. So as you can see, the language is kind of broad. It's not as specific as, let's say, the Creeks or Albany Hill. Um, and so I wanted you guys to have this information so that as we're talking about projects, you're really keeping this language in mind. And if there's a project that you feel like it could be justified as a recreation play field, then that's a discussion we'll want to have as we move forward. Um, and so in, based on the um, conversation with the city attorney on the basic um, beginning ideas that were proposed or um, put out there, this is again not it's gonna be hard to see for the audience, but not the final list. These are just things that were on the list. And so I, I just put in a chart for you. The color coding, um, I'm using the green as, yes, it meets the classification for recreation play field. Uh, and orangey color is, it could. We'll, we'll just wanna make sure we have a good description of why it does meet um, recreation play field. And then a red meaning, no, it does not meet recreation play field. Um, there are a few other things I've added on here that um, have been brought up recently, and so I've added on there. Um, I, I didn't say that uh, the um, request to amend our work plan was approved by council for the dog park um, discussions, which we'll put on another agenda, but they also added in um, investigating, and we'll talk about this in a minute, um, installing turf in the middle of Pier Street Park which currently is just a um, dirt patch. They would like us to look into that. City Council did, so yes. you're okay. They've requested that to be added to our work plan, which w it's actually already on our work plan. I think they're making the clarification of investigating turf, um, which is field turf. 
Um, so I'm adding that in here too. Um, not that Measure R would have to be spent on a field turf because that's going to be extremely expensive. Um, but I put it on here because it would it would qualify. Really fit, yeah. Uh, and then also there are um, talks about some future facility projects at the Tom Bates Field, which is the regional f um, field complex that has a lot of. Um, they're putting in, re replacing the turf fields. There's a large turf field there, but they're talking about putting in um, like a field house, which would have restrooms and things. And um, council is interested in, if there's a request for monies from the participating JPA cities, Measure R money could be used to, to fund that if there is a request. The city does pay into a JPA for all of those repairs and things. Each city that's a part of that in that regional complex pays money to keep it moving, keep it going. Annual, there's an annual fee, and then we paid an extra fee this year to help with the replacement of that turf. So um, I had it on here because I just wanted it to be more a complete list, not necessarily something we're going to be doing, but something you should consider. Also on here, I don't have um, bocce courts. We did have an estimate for that because that was originally a Measure WW project, so I put the estimate in here. Um, other ones, I'm waiting to see if there's actually an interest in pursuing before we do the work on getting cost estimates. The batting cage was an easy one because I'd already talked to uh, our maintenance department about this a long time ago, so we had an estimate for that. That's the cementing of the batting cage. Um, and then there's one other item, and it's on the agenda tonight, and I, um, it is the mountain bike park, and you noticed in your packet I provided you with kind of a, a packet from the company that's um, installing the uh, Dirt City project. The reason I put that in there was just to give you a visual of what a pump track or a mountain bike park looks like. Those pictures are pretty good. And also, um, Jim and I, Jim Russell and I, have met with Alex, the man who is building Dirt City, and we walked the couple potential sites. And we asked him to just give us a cost estimate of what it would be to just do a concept for, this, for the commission to um, just have something to look at of what it might look like and what it might cost. Um, so if you're interested in pursuing that project, um, that can be something I would just handle. We would pay. It's a fairly small fee to have a nice um, something, a launching uh, pad for that project. I, I also want to just say that it doesn't mean that it's going to happen at that site, but in order for us, if we were given the um, the green light to move forward by council to actually use that site and, and work with Caltrans, Caltrans kind of wants a business proposal. They want to know what is going in there so they can um, have a full concept. So having a concept plan would really help um, <coughs> kind of continue that process as well. So. If you have any questions, I know um, we'll have public comment about the mountain biking park, and I will say I think the one site, um, sorry, um, Commissioner Martin, you're gonna have to visualize the map here, that we are interested in, in mountain bike um, park people were interested is the site that, I'm calling it Lower Pier Street Park, but it's Cleveland right under the overpass that goes there, so it's where the overpass is really high. Um, there's kind of a triangle space in that area, and that's the one they're, they're, I think, focusing on. Um, and I th and there's been a nice discussion, I'll just finish this part, about the Mountain Biking Club possibly being our partners in maintaining and doing work parties, like our Friends of Albany Parks program, but for that specific location. So we have an edible landscape group that takes care of the edible landscape thing. Maybe we'd work on a maintenance agreement um, of having volunteer labor helping out if there was a mountain biking park, since the club might have a be the biggest users of it, but um, this is most of the information I think Jim might want to speak to it as well um, that I've done since we last met. Questions? I have a couple questions. Um, in terms of today, we're just saying what we'd like to explore, because I do find it's difficult without the estimates to Mm -hmm. get a sense of, I mean, I have no idea how much things cost. Mm -hmm. So that's my only concern is um, knowing what's a fair number of things to keep on the table. The other question I have is um, parking, how parking fits into recreational play fields that it actually was in one of the definitions that um, park, additional parking, fencing, backstops, gutters, landscaping actually do qualify as okay. improvements to a facility. So um, that one actually is called out in um, the engineer's report as acceptable. 
And are we frequently seeing that the parking lot at that location is oh. over capacity? Yeah, that's a great question. Yes, Ocean View uh, parking lot is highly used throughout the day. So during the day, um, we have people to just use the park during the day. But then um, once we hit about that two to three, four, five o'clock, we run into the ball field users for practice and our friendship club pickups, um, people coming in. Um, so that parking lot is usually full. Um, there's a couple other adjustments that we need to make, which is um, putting a time limit on the parking in there, because we're finding that there are van pool people that are parking in that lot currently, mm -hmm. which I think will get resolved um, when they add the um, park and ride underneath the Buchanan overpass. Um, but that would help, too. And then also it indicated that currently mulch is being stored in that location. Mm -hmm. Who uses that? How is it used? What is, what is the current setup, and where would that go? There... Um, it, it's a it's a it's a strange little bull belt right when you drive in, and the city will dump um, a mulch pile there, and um, during certain times of year, a sand pile for sandbags. But those two things could be relocated to other places. Um, as we're talking, and if you guys get asking questions, I think did I, I think I have an image maybe from last meeting I can pull up, or at least something. But it's right when you drive in, and it's right on the right hand side. There's a few trees. It wouldn't take out any trees, but it would just add some parking in that section. It's typically it's, it's currently unused. And there's public distribution. Uh, the residents are free to take the sand. Yes, over. but we do have a lot of illegal uh, mulch dumping. So sure. tree companies will just come by and dump mulch there. So we're spending a lot of time filling up big things to get out the bad mulch that they're leaving behind. Yeah. So it is a problem mulch dump. <laughs> Uh, so the the spinning batting cage that you uh, talk about, because I know we have a couple, is currently it's a dirt surface and it gets it's dug out and is constantly during the raining season um, wet, and it requires a lot of maintenance to actually bring it back to be able, being used. Um, so it gets worn down. So that's why you see typically uh, Memorial Park the batting cages are cemented. Um, so that would cut down on the maintenance required for it and allow for people to use it even after uh, a rainy time. It is a large space though because. It is 1,200 square feet, so that's why the cost is fairly high. Is that cost um, a quote you already have in hand, or is it an estimate? Is it what? Is it a quote you already have from a contractor, or is it an estimate? It's the estimate from my um, operations manager okay. in Public Works. And we on staff, we actually have a licensed um, cement person, so oh, he good. did the estimate. Okay. So, so that's a pretty good quote, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know Gino had comments on that, too. I, I think he's supportive, but... Mm -hmm. and the bocce courts were... Is that based on moving the community garden, or is it in a different space? No, it is just the space um, that is behind the picnic area, currently in a uh, never used grass volleyball um, area. And it's a two court side by side. Um, and then the, that quote is from a design build company. That's what they do. So they would come in. They have the, the typical design, doesn't change much, except for the surface that you put in. Yeah. Do you have a sense of the, the desire for that? I'm just curious. <laughs> I, I don't know. A lot Maybe of seniors play stop, bocce. Stop. <laughs> I, I asked that question. And, and I'm a huge that. fan yeah. of bocce. But I will say that I think as somebody that does not have children who moved here, a lot of the recreation options are very geared towards youth. And there are young adults that are interested. But also there's a huge interest in the senior center for bocce. Mm -hmm. So just to keep that in mind, not to mention it's next to University Village where you might potentially have um, interest. There's a lot of opportunities for league play, and it's a social sport. It's something that anybody can play, no matter what their level of fitness. And um, it's it's a really fun social activity. It is. I, I do actually. I really like the idea of um, creating more play spaces for all ages because mm -hmm. I, I do think there's a lot of baseball, <laughs> free little league. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice location also because it is right behind that large picnic area. So when we have our larger um, picnic groups, that's typically the only space they can go to. So it's a great like picnic sport that you can do in the back. And that's the site for most of our adult sports take place. So it can be an adult sports type. Um, as Commissioner Patterson was saying, you can have tournaments and, and play. Mm -hmm. So you can actually have leagues. It's just two courts. <laughs> it's okay, a team sport. So yeah. Adults yeah, that's like eight people playing. Or is that quote, and also, is that quote pretty uh, solid? I think so. I think so, yes. I mean, what was that? Is this old or is this recent? I mean, I know we talked about this. Uh, we did talk about it a while ago, but... Um, so you think it's pretty recent? Or pretty yeah. I mean, I can also double check it, of course. Yeah. yeah. And there are only estimates at this point in our... Sure. in our world, but we usually put in contingencies and try to overestimate, but mm -hmm. um, this company is, the company that 
it would be put out to bid. So the design build company might be the best option, but it would go out to bid. Well, I have it a would go out to. Not necessarily. Well, I just have a question about the balance of the measure R funds. I think I read in city council that they're trying to renew it. Is that right? Or a different different version? <coughs> yes. Oh. Um, okay, but it would be the same kind of funds for the same kind of development. It would be for maintenance. So that's one of the big parts of uh, Measure R is their maintenance funds in there. And these are capital project <coughs> funds. Um, just like for Albany Hill, there's a maintenance side that Margo works out of to, and we have typically shelter built to do a lot of work. The other side of that is the capital um, project side. That's where all the money for those uh, access improvement trails is gonna come from. So they're two separate funds. They're, try they're working on, a, on proposing a maintenance Measure our bill, tip, kind of the same thing. So it would still maintain parks and play play fields and creeks and Albany Hill. So I guess my question is: Is this three three fourteen that we have to sort of, you know, play around with? I guess how is this it for like I don't know ten years? Is this it for, or we expect some more funding to come in five years? I just want to know how long range. I have no, I can't, I can't tell you. I, we, we've used up Measure WW. I don't know if they'll be renewing something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and there is that, um, I'm not familiar with the full uh, state um, proposition. I think it's 68, I think it is, mm -hmm. which is a state parks, uh, parks um, program. And I don't have that text. But otherwise, we don't, w w for a long time, we went through a really a long wave of not having any money for any capital projects for parks. Yeah. Um, and then... And we were sitting on Measure WW money waiting for Pier Street Park to see if those funds were going to fund that. Um, and when that got solved, then we had this Measure WW money. And then Measure R, we spend it, but we haven't done, we're almost at the end. So this is supposed to be spent by the end of next year, or at least moving through a project. Moving through a project. But I don't have anything else uh, that I know of at the moment, no. The uh, the mountain biking park. I was wondering for that 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 my my daughter's on the team and and so the, I know the team would be you know, as excited about the, that. We also have an active Albany strollers and rollers uh, group that could also um, that I'm involved with that uh, could also be involved with either maintenance or outreach. Um, I'm wondering. Uh, I've looked at those spaces under the freeway overpass. Do you know? Uh, why the larger area on um, west, closer towards the bulb, uh, wasn't considered, wasn't in initially. Jim was with, yeah, we we walked, we've walked the site, but you guys are welcome to do the same thing. It's very loud, and um, it, it felt. I think I, you should let um, Jim speak for his side, but it didn't feel as cozy and like main, like fenced off um, space that was as. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> if you're, is that okay for? Sure, okay. please. Yep. S since he and I were yep. there together. Yeah, please come on up. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate your patience. Sure. <laughs> so we looked at both locations, and um, it, Alex, uh, as an experienced mountain bike park designer and builder, was more excited about the uh, the eastern location next to Cleveland Avenue, uh, to the east of Cleveland Avenue. For, for a couple of reasons. One is that it's, uh, it's sheltered, so these, these dirt um, constructs will last a lot longer. Um, and then it, uh, it has a lot of natural slope to it, which would make it uh, a lot more interesting, more exciting. Um, and we also, I guess, had some thoughts that if one of the two locations was going to be a possible dog park location, that that open area would be much preferred uh, by dog owners, at least I, that's one one of the things that I recall. Uh, but I, I think it was just uh, seen as being uh, a lot more interesting, exciting spot than the, than, the, than the relatively flat open field area. Yeah, the overpass provide. We, it was raining the day we were out there, and provides a nice um, shelter uh, for the space at the Pierce at the Cleveland site, whereas the best area at the uh, a Buchanan. Buchanan site is the open grass field, but and if you move underneath the um, overpass there, the overpass there is really low, and so it's extremely loud in terms of traffic because it's actually 80, or I think it's 80 at that point, mm -hmm. um, right on top of you. So 
I mean, then that would be the potential dog park, though, because I don't know that that would be such an attractive dog park down, area. But no, down by the, the railroad tracks area in the grass, it's much better. It's not as loud. Mm. Um, okay. Because it's the, have to that's walk the on ramp. Yeah. It's one of those things once you're out there, you, you can feel yeah. the difference, but um, it may not be good for either one of those. And it and may not be a place for a dog park. It may not be a place for a mountain bike I, mm. either. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, so uh, Alex felt he could work with either, but he just thought that the one that we were talking about would be preferable. Uh, does anybody, okay, thanks. Do you have anything else you wanna? Uh, just a, just a, a couple minor comments. Um, one is that the, you know, while the, the full price cost isn't listed in here, um, you know, we, the, the Dirt World example that, that Shelley was mentioning in, in Richmond and some other locations, we have a, uh, an idea that it would be not more likely than, than 60,000, 50 or 60, 40 to 60 for the whole thing. Um, we don't know exactly until we get a, a design put together, but it's um, just to put it in order of magnitude, it's you know, less than 100,000. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other comment I had was, uh, how would we, I'm, I'm, I'm puzzled why we say it could meet the classification and how would we go about determining that it, that it does meet a play field classification? Um, is there a specific wording that we'd have to look at? From measure R. So I think that I, I feel like it does. It's a modern play field and it, it's not a play field in terms of its grass, but that shouldn't discount it. And so that's why I wanted to include those I through, I through O, re, the recitals. So you guys can read that it is a benefit, it's for youth and, you know, and we can make that case when we make a recommendation to council that these are the reasons why we feel that it meets the classification. It wasn't as, in the city attorney's eyes, not a slam dunk, but he said, maybe, and I do agree with you, I see what you're saying. So I think it's just good for us to come up with, here are the reasons why it meets that in our recommendation. Okay, thank you. Um, so Shelly, your, your suggestion for us to be reviewing this is to sort of, to discuss it and provide feedback and direction to staff. Yeah, I think if, um, the one main thing would be the, um, the bike, uh, park thing and if you're interested in actually getting a cost estimate for that again This is not saying this is going to happen at that site because we need there's a Process. Council will decide if that um, can take place or not, but then you'll have that information that you're looking for um, And I think that would be beneficial if we want to try to move that project forward in the future um, and, and the also thing we don't have to do all of these things like in the next year. Let's, if there was a couple things you're interested, let's move forward with these two things um, and get those approved through council, that's another option too. And then what happens if we have like 100 remaining for some reason? Then we just go through the process, again, you know, keep doing the same process. We can, we can mm -hmm. put it out to the next year. Okay. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I feel like Ocean View Bocce was already in the mix. It had gone through that process. It might be something we say, now we would, we want to continue with that. It was in the uh, CFI, CIP already. We'd just be changing the funding source. Um, and then the other one you could take right away might be, yes, let's get a concept so we can at least know what would be involved with the mountain biking thing so that can start going through a process if that's something you're interested in moving forward. You can also decide, no, we're not interested in moving forward with it, um, even after the concept is done. Um, because if the council doesn't like either one of those locations for a mountain bike, then we don't have a location for it. But at least we'll have an estimate of what that might cost and sizes of it. Um, so my thoughts are, I mean, uh, I want to hear everybody's thoughts, but I just think I'm happy to explore the mountain biking, mountain bike park further and to pay for that concept because it can't happen without that concept. Um, I really like the idea of the Bocce courts. What I don't feel like I've done is sort of explored all the various recreation options that there might be. And especially since this fund, this measure our funding may not happen again, we may be dry for another 10 years or something. I just want to be more personally, I want to be more intentional and thoughtful about what we spend. 300,000 is significant. So I'd like to do just a little more digging personally. And it sounds like we have time to consider other recreation options. Um, that's my two cents. You mean for that site, but no, not necessarily for that site. Just generally, right? Just sure. Yes. You know, in terms of, do we 
you know, I actually like the idea of creating, fixing up the batting cage, but I don't know if I would personally want to spend 25 there if part of that 25 could go to something that's totally new and interesting or support a bocce ball court that costs more than 85. So uh, I just feel like I haven't considered all the various options to know. Mm -hmm. I do agree that without comparable pricing, it is difficult to understand what you're sacrificing away. Mm -hmm. It's no surprise to anybody that I think um, the bocce ball, ball courts were part of the Measure W reconsolidation that we did at the last meeting. So I don't know if any of these other projects were um, as well or if it was just that one, but I think, you know, that's kind of one thought in my mind that, you know, and I also I think there was a deadline about when we needed to finish some of the spending of some of the dollars. So I'm... I would love to see a little bit more cost estimate of some of the other things, and also I, I support moving forward on the bocce court. Um, I want to say as a representative of the Board of Education that I'm very supportive of the mountain bike park or whatever the next step is in that process because I think there's a team of students that want to ride there. Um, it is a forward-thinking kind of recreation option, and I think it is valuable for us to keep in mind multiple perspectives, all the different types of people in this community that we're all representing to ensure that we're doing a good job fostering recreation opportunities across ages and across abilities. Um, so anything that, you know, if there are other opportunities along those lines, I, I would support it. But I also think that if we have further cost estimates, it will help everyone feel more comfortable um, probably. So I don't know how that timing is and what costs there are in terms of getting more details there, but um, yeah. I could definitely work on that. It, 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 I, it sounds like maybe there's not something that you guys are wanting to really take off this list in terms of continuing to investigate. You would like to just get more the more of the cost estimates on the ones on the list. And if there are others... I mean, yeah, I mean... You don't have to make a decision tonight. I guess my, I would say that I don't. I also don't want to um, send you on a like task to look up costs for things that I, you know, I personally <laughs> wouldn't. I just I don't love the idea of additional parking just because it seems like that's not additional play field. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. so for me, I wouldn't suggest looking into that. But anyway, so uh, I kind of want to also just think about other ideas, and I don't know exactly how we can generate more ideas or more public input about these funds that may not come again for a while. And doesn't, don't measure our funds sunset in another year or two, something like that? Yes, the, the, we stop collecting on the bond or however we phrase that, but we haven't, it's September 2019, um, but the consensus is that if at least we have a plan and we're working through the projects don't have to be done by that date, but we have to show that we're substantially moving towards something for the spending of it. I also just wanted to add that um, I see some things on here that I feel like might require some public comment or notification. So for example, um, there's gonna be a future agenda item about dog parks. I think that probably relates a little bit to that dog park or bigger discussions about where dogs congregate. Mm -hmm. Similarly, moving the community garden, I'm not sure if that's gonna be something where we need to notify people and have people have an opportunity to comment or not. So I'm just trying to scope out timeline-wise like that, you know, it may take some time for some of those things and I, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I maybe uh, hold off on researching prices for uh, a dog park and a community garden because we don't know where those locations would be and lots of other parameters and we haven't got, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? I'm just going to say, Shelly, I'm beaten down. I completely support the bocce ball court. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Maybe I strategically sat Commissioner <laughs> Patterson right next to you. And, and, as, and as one of the people who's been involved in the process all along, I think one thing that might be useful would for you folks to see the whole list that we started with. Oh, yeah. Some okay. of which was fun. Yes, that would be great. And you yeah. get some of the other ideas that we've talked about. Uh, mm -hmm. at, least, at least stimulate your thinking, if nothing else. So maybe that's something we can get, Shelly, for next agenda? Is that yes. original list? That'd be great. Um, do you... Can I make a motion about the, um, I'm motioning to 
recommend that we do the concept for the mm -hmm. mountain bike park? Second. Let's support that. Okay. okay, so vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. And then should we have a motion or just direct staff, direct Shelley to uh, look into, get quotes for the other items here except for the dog park, which will be a future agenda item and the garden, community garden, because that's a whole nother agenda item. So do you wanna be specific about what she would look at? Do you wanna say maybe get an updated bocce court quote potentially? And then, um, Fencing was a big um, issue and also something that we had concern could be very expensive. So I'm not sure what's involved in scoping that, but it seemed like that had some impassioned mm -hmm. comment. Yes, yes. and um, it was in the works and we, we hit a little speed bump um, with quotes, but I will um, do that again. Maybe we could, I mean, if we're not so sure about what else we'd like to, I just don't want Shelly to do work if we're not so sure which, what we want to look at. I don't I, I mean, Do you I think have the other, other ones specific are suggestions for other things you want her to get the cost estimate for? Um, I, the scoreboard one is a fairly easy one. Okay. Um, and it, I know that Lily had a scoreboard they were, were interested in donating, so I'll check back with them. So that would just be um, city installing, so it would be a cost to install a, a scoreboard. Um, the additional fencing, I know that process had gotten started. I'll check back to see what was going on with it. Now the turf field, um, oh, sorry, field is spelled wrong. Turf field um, is kind of a bigger topic and will require... Uh, more investigation to get an actual cost on that one because I, I think that might be fairly expensive and yeah. not. Um, I wanted to keep it on here because if it is $300,000 to do the turf field and that's something council wants, then they may say we want to use that money to put turf in. Mm -hmm. If it comes back and it's you know $500,000, then it may not be a target. I'm not sure, but and are I they look sure that's not on your agenda to look into? It's on their agenda. Their no, they put agenda? it on our. Oh, they uh, did work plan to do that investigation, and I believe that um, Mark Hurley has is going to take on that task of getting the estimate for that. Okay, so that's already happening. So we don't need to yeah, just need to do decide that. on that. Yeah, um, I'd say we can remove the community garden just because it's red. It's yeah, you know, I put I put dog park and community garden because they were questions. Like, would yeah. they? qualifies classified as a uh, play field, so I just wanted to illustrate that I see. one's possible and one is a no right. um, for the community gardeners. Oh, okay, I see. There was a specific question from one of the community gardeners, does measure our funds, could they be I used? I see. And then the future projects, I, I don't think we have a number in it. You know, it may not even happen in the next year, but um, I could definitely get the answers from, um, we have two council people that sit on that JPA um, to see if they have any more updated information. Okay. So then what I have from our discussion to, um, we're requesting to get a requ uh, updated uh, quote for the bocce ball courts, to get a quote for the scoreboard at Ocean View, since that's relatively simple, to um, get a quote for the artificial turf, the synthetic turf field, since you were gonna do that anyway, and then potentially just look into the update for the future facility projects at Tom Bates Field. Okay. And the fencing, where are we gonna it's already, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually also interested in the parking at Ocean View. I know that not everybody is, but um, I experienced that issue. Um, and that, you said that might be fairly, well, how hard would that be? I don't think it's that bad, except that we lost Aleda, our transportation person, because mm. she was going to do the estimate. But let me talk to Gail in Public Works to see if. And it's something else with the bocce courts, is I see on the description that part of that's the bike path, and that might, it sounds like a, potentially a, a great way to connect the village to the bike path to get over to the, um, yeah. So, mm -hmm. but it'd be good to see that separated out. And uh, it also is our bike paths part of our purview or is that transportation commission? Uh, it, it was going through the park and it's in the um, uh, Active, active transportation plan. This is one of the projects of making this connection. And it also came up in one of our uh, Ocean View uh, Friends Molly Parks meetings where people say they come out of that gate and they have this much path and then they run into the picnic. And so we kept it on our list from a while ago about that could be a good solution and a cheap thing to 
put an asphalt path that runs along the backside of the picnic, and then it would ride and connect right into the Buchanan bike path. So um, we added it in together. It doesn't have to be married to each other, but if we're doing work out there, you could do it all at once. And it's not a very long path. Um, so basically there's a gate that you get into the village back there, and there's an existing, I think it's a DG path, but it just ends um, at the picnic. And so people have to ride their bikes, kids ride their bikes through the picnic area to get um, through the park from that section. So it would be a nice amenity for the UC Village people using that. Um, yeah, I, I agree that that could be a nice connection. I, I guess the question was, um, would it be from these funds or would the city have some other transportation funds for that? We can look, at, we can look and see. Um, and uh, we'd have to look and see the fund balances in some of those, Measure B and Measure BB. Um, funds that are usually transportation funds. Um, so I'd have to look at the, the projects for that. Okay, so is that the kind of feedback you're looking for? Yeah, Sounds like, great. Yeah. And do, we don't need to make a motion on that because we've given it to you. No, that's the discussion. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, any, okay, so next item is work plan status update. Okay, so just this is just a really quick thing and it's good timing because we have two new commissioners here and although um, there's been a, a brief anymore. <laughs> look at the work plan. Um, all, all I did is kind of X off some of the things that we've already accomplished. And also, I wanted to notify you that, that they did approve us moving forward with investigating and analyzing potential spots for a dog park. Um, and then that they asked us to look at the feasibility of putting in a turf field at Peggy Thompson. And we already had that as future planning phases for Pe Peggy Thompson, including possibility of creating a sports field. So I think we were all on the same page for that. Um, uh, just a few things I, I let you know, the bathroom, the bathroom innovation is going to request to approve to go out to bid and that'll be on Monday. So that'll get moving forward. There's a, a schedule for that. Um, Dartmouth Tot Lot is just the sign and, and me tackling the, uh, the name side of it, which I haven't done yet, and I will get to it. So the real big thing that's gonna be coming up uh, is Albany Hill access improvements. Uh, the, where we left off, um, actually the city has sent, put on RFP for an architect, they have selected one, and there's a staff kickoff um, of just like, what do we need to do, what are we gonna do? And that is next week. And so after that, we'll be having, I'm assuming from that meeting, we'll decide when the commu community meeting and when the Parks and Rec meetings are and how we're gonna um, put that schedule together. So you'll have that coming to you in the next, um, it's probably six months or so. Uh, dogs, we're kind of doing that and we'll, we'll wanna talk about how we, how we wanna tackle um, either a subcommittee with the ad hoc dog committee. There's still this question about the ad hoc dog committee because there's one person left from that and if we have to keep it. So settling that, and there was some mention that the discussion about a dog park might be best if it's with the commissioners um, to handle. So we'll need to talk through and get more information, but that is coming too. Park signage, I keep promising you, I swear it will come. Um, street tree removal policy, we're working on that. Uh, community garden, um, that is, that is still on our list. We are still keeping that in our minds of figuring out something about that. And maybe we have a new, a new approach um, or something to investigate with um, Commissioner Sardinius' uh, experience. We, uh, so that could be on a future agenda just to give you an update on that. Measure WW, uh, this one should be crossed off because um, we made that consolidation to the Memorial Park and then there's a few things that I, you know, I would anticipate they're gonna be next year. They're not the priority items. The priority is gonna be Albany Hill, um, going through those plans, really. And also the Peggy Thompson Pier Street Park and mountain biking was already on our work plan, so it seems like that will, something will be moving forward. We're, the ongoing stuff is pretty much the same. You know, supporting Friends of Valley Parks, that's still going. Um, and then uh, you'll get a, a update on status of um, Assembly Bill 2404, which is the Fair um, Play Act in Sports, which is a recreation programs providing uh, fair and equal access to our um, facilities. And if we ran leagues, um, boys and girls would have the same opportunities. 
So we'll give a report on that. And that's mainly it. If there's questions about it or We still have some big stuff, but I think we've made a lot of progress through it in, in just a, basically about a year. I think it went to council last year in March. So this was part of a um, sort of a regular update you give to council? Is that why? I'm just curious about the, you know, the addition to the work plan. Was it just, or is it something, I'm just wondering when why we should Is that on the be. agenda? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, because just we added two new it. items, so I see. Okay. I'll formalize the addition of those two. And I just wanted to give an update of sure. the progress we made. That's that's it. great. Okay. Thank There's you. no a lot of new commissioners too. It's, it's yeah, it's helpful. Yeah. Thanks. Very yeah. Any questions for the um, garden potential garden relocation? Mm -hmm. Are there other funds earmarked for something like that? No. And that's why you know I was hoping that. Uh, the answer would be yes, that's a play field for adults. I mean, it is dirt and mm -hmm. plants, but no, there isn't, but we'll need to, we'll need to think about that. I, ha I, I have a staff report and a, a letter from uh, our on-call architects to our restoration, like Creek people talking about the trees in that section that they are gonna be uh, too much to trim to provide them with sunshine. Um, but I'm going to work with Commissioner on seeing if there's anything else we can do um, to those trees. Or what about, is there any other locations to investigate? Just curious, if there's any other park? That's what's on our list. So if people are feeling like we should start looking for other spots, then, I mean, you know, it's limited. It yeah. is limited. Um, and it should be a, a discussion to have if we can't do something with the trees that are causing the issue. Because otherwise, they really like their space. It's really the shade is the issue. Mm -hmm. and if we can't solve that problem, then we have a we need to move them. We do have a small community garden space in Memorial Park, if I'm not mistaken, between the picnic area and Section B. So I know at one point there was a conversation about would that be a good space perhaps to expand? Uh -huh. it, now that one is our edible landscape, so it's just open to anyone. And the community garden are the plots that people actually rent yeah, for was, a year. I actually didn't, wasn't very aware of them, so, but uh, when I was uh, appointed, I walked to all the different parks in town and I, I, mm -hmm. I found the, the garden. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, would, I would like to hear more about w eventually what, it's, uh, what purpose it serves, because um, I noticed it was locked and I couldn't get into it, but yet it's mm -hmm. supposed to be a public facility, so. Actually, it's for community gardeners. They, they pay, they're a membership fee, so typical for most community gardens that it, you have plots, like that's the person's plot, so. Yeah, I get yeah. that. There's also, we also have, uh, I don't know if it's a city's resource or how it works, but the Gill Tract also has a lot of uh, guard, if people want to garden mm -hmm. and uh, share in the food that's produced, there's, that's a huge thing that, that's, uh, but uh, we don't need to discuss it all right now, but I was, mm -hmm. I'd like to hear more about it maybe offline. Uh, yes, we are not involved in the, the farm. The juicy property. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we're supposed to discuss prioritization of tasks. Is that something we want to do right now, or maybe we can discuss yeah. it next time? Yeah, we can do it next time. It is right now. Yeah, yeah it's Let's a little do it bit. Next time, I, I, didn't I think so too. I think yeah. we're spent. It's not a good decision-making time. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that can be our next one of the next agenda items. For I next told her time. that we never go over nine. Oh, <laughs> no, we really. In their first right. meeting, where they go. <laughs> It's okay, I believed her too. So, um, so in terms of future agenda items, if that can be one for next time, is reviewing this work plan for prioritization. And then not necessarily next agenda, but in the queue at some point, I'd love to have a sort of education about tree planting in parks in Albany, or just tree planting in Albany and how that program's rolled out. And then at some other point, heritage tree ordinance. If anybody else has any other? I think the dog parks so, sort of sooner rather than later, only because my sense is that that's a big issue and it might require more than one meeting. Yeah. And it might, the first part of that might be deciding how we want to handle that in terms of creating a subcommittee and how we want that process to go. And that can actually be part of our discussion when we talk about work plan, you know, next time. Okay, great. Any, anything else? Um, uh, no, I we, don't know about the heritage tree. I, I have to check because okay, it sure. is a, a, would be a brand new like Thing. If we we could put it on it like if you want to recommend that we ask to amend our work plan to include a heritage tree ordinance, 
So Nicole wanted it to run by us first, or is that the idea? I, I, yeah, I'd have to check in to see what um, the discussion was about. So maybe we should pick it up with the work plan discussion too. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Anything else? Meeting adjourned. Thank you.